Welcome back to the Video Store Junkies podcast, a podcast about movies and the experience of watching them. And tonight, maybe the experience of making them, or maybe the uh, lack of experience of making them, because today we're going to be talking about AI and filmmaking, and we're going to be talking about whether AI is going to take over filmmaking and every every filmmaker in the industry is just going to be out of a job in a couple of years, as some people are predicting, and uh, maybe the computers will just be entertaining us from now on. So we're going to be talking about what some of the industry insiders are saying about AI. And then we're also just going to be talking about our own opinions about uh, what what we think the uh, the future of film, filmmaking is in AI, because obviously that's what you tune in uh, to just just hear our opinions. So uh, I'm going to we're, we're going to introduce ourselves for those of you, if anyone's listening and they haven't listened to the podcast before. First of all, shame on you. Uh, second of all, I am Zachary Edgerton, one of the many co-hosts of this podcast and let's just go around very briefly and introduce ourselves. Uh, who's who's coming to us from beautiful? Uh, wow, I just uh, blanked on <laughs> the, the name of the the, the city. Uh, Bill, where are you from? Yeah, be- um, you were, I, I knew this is beautiful. You were talking, of course, of beautiful yeah. Sanford, North Carolina, <laughs> located in Lee County, the geographic center of the state. We are in the middle of a beautiful state and close to none of the good parts, but equally far mm. away from all of them. So it's all right. Bill Bill works for the tourism industry yes, uh, yeah, in his spare time. I, do do, do you want to tell people who you are, Bill? I'm just quoting the brochure. Uh, I'm Bill Mulligan. I am a high school science teacher for the foreseeable future. Uh, and a podcaster as, well, I don't think I need to say that. Indie filmmaker. I have one published book, Rum, from Falstaff Press. And um, yeah, just a jack of all trades, master of none. All around good guy. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, so let's let's stay in uh, North Carolina and see who else is uh, coming to us from that beautiful state. Beep boop boop boop. That's me. Uh, it's wow. Paul Cardulo. I may or may not be an AI, as far as I know. If I do, I don't really know that I'm an AI. So uh, perhaps well, I don't that's know. Fine. we're gonna. We're yeah. gonna I, I I told you guys before we started recording that we're gonna have a bunch of. Uh, special special little treats in here and one of them is going to be a live turing test to see. i was just going to say can we do a turing <laughs> test on paul yeah yeah <laughs> uh and, and even and, if he passes the fail. turing test even if he passes the turing test i'm still going to do a uh, void comp test on him because i'm still not entirely certain of his humanity either way um okay well, who's who let's let's head south and uh speaking of people who may or may not be ais uh who's who's coming to us from florida hello that's me my name is Renee St. Alban, and that's it. <laughs> All right. All right, I think, cool. Renee, I think Renee's got the most likely scenario of being an AI because she has a lovely voice, whereas I don't. And well, That's you heard, true. You just heard Paul, <laughs> and, you've been, and they've been listening yeah. to you, so none of us are going to be asked to, to voice an at and I have been. I have been told that I have a uh, face for radio and a voice for print, so yeah, I don't think, I don't think anyone would be uh, uh, spending billions of dollars developing a uh, a model that will give you this voice. But uh, anyways, uh, okay, so let's let's just start. I, I want to start our conversation off tonight. I'm going to start with a uh, an article that, uh, that came out, uh, let's see, February 22nd, tw- uh, 2024, in the Hollywood Reporter. This headline uh, kind of got passed around because it was kind of a, a huge, huge deal. Uh, it says, uh, Tyler Perry puts $800 million studio expansion on hold after seeing OpenAI's Sora, jobs are going to be lost. Uh, I just want to quote from this a little bit to kick off the conversation. Over the past four years, Tyler Perry has been planning a, an $800 million expansion of his studio in, in Atlanta, which would have added 12 sound stages to the 330-acre property. Now, however, those ambitions are on hold thanks to the rapid developments he's seeing in the realm of artificial intelligence, including OpenAI's text-to-video model Sora, which debuted February 15th and stunned observers with its cinematic video outputs. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. Uh, He says, I've been watching AI. This is a quote from Perry. I've been watching AI very closely and watching the advancements very closely. I was in the middle of and have been planning for the last four years about an $800 million expansion at the studio, which would have increased the back lot a tremendous size. We were adding 12 more sound stages. All of that is currently and indefinitely on hold because of Sora and what I'm seeing. I have gotten word over the last year or so that this was coming, but I have but I had no idea until I saw recently the demonstrations of what it's able to do. It's shocking to me. Uh, let's let's start uh, talking about this article, and then I'm also uh, uh, just a little a little teaser for later. I'm going to tell you why it's actually pretty dumb to talk about uh, how AI is going <laughs> to impact the industry based on this article. But we'll get to well, that in a little bit later. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Bill. Well, I was just going to say, um, I was when this article came out, it was shocking. Just you know, the shockwaves that it sent through the industry. I haven't seen people. You know, when, when they heard that Tyler Perry was not going to expand his studio, I haven't heard people predicting the death of creativity in Hollywood this much since the time Tyler Perry announced he was going to, you know, expand his studio. I mean, so, wow, so we, we, we lost out on a ty- more Tyler Perry movies. Circle the wagons. But then again, you start thinking, well, maybe, maybe that is the canary in the coal mine there. Uh, if Because... Yeah, they're the kind of movies I could see AI pulling off. Absolutely. But, oh, yeah. Well, yeah um, oh, go ahead, Renee. Sorry. No, uh, no. Yeah, oh, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Edit all that out, Zach. Um, <laughs> no, I agree. Not. I think it says a lot about him. I mean, sorry. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to start beef with Tyler Perry because he could sure. destroy me. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But I just think, it. I mean, if your movies are that formulaic that – you really are concerned about AI coming in and taking over. Like, I think that just says more about you. If you heard tomorrow that the Hallmark Channel laid off their entire writing <laughs> staff and was going to go to chat GPT, you'd be like, you mean they still had a writing staff and hadn't done this like five years ago? <laughs> I, you yeah. wouldn't be surprised well, l- at l- all. Listen, back, back to Tyler Perry, though. I, I think you guys are, are over overreading this. Clearly, it is a it's a promotional thing because in a couple yeah. months he's going to have Medea versus AI come out. Oh. You know that's coming. <laughs> wow! And it's all just a setup. It's just promotion for that. You know you, that, that would that's, be great. That's, it's, that's it's, my take on it. It's going to be like the Santa Claus three or whatever, where you know it's it's about Medea making a movie with Medea, but the robot Medea, an AI Medea who looks just like Medea, but you know she's she's AI. It writes yeah. itself, and it will write itself. It absolutely will write itself. If I go, if I right now, while the rest of you are yammering on, go to ChatGPT and put that plot in, they will spit out a reasonably good Medea versus Medea movie. They might ding me on yeah. on copyright infringement. Uh, no, I, I believe it would be called Medea versus Mecha Medea. Ooh, uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> okay. Take actually, my money. No, that, that would be actually. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, actually. Hey, let me let me ask let me ask <laughs> let me ask you a question, Paul. Let me ask you a question yes. real quick. Uh, I'm not trying to single you out here, but uh, do, do, so you, our our number one listener, uh, as we all know, is your mom. Does your yeah. mom? Do, do you think your mom knows, understands what like AI is and what we're talking about right now? We've we've talked about it before. I thought you were going to ask me if she 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 likes Medea because she does. I um, but, yes. um, but yeah. But uh, yeah. I, we've talked about it a little bit before. My dad's the one who really talks about it a lot more than I than than she does. Mm. Okay, so but he so doesn't listen to us, so that's the, you know. The, yeah, the the reason I ask, and I'm not trying to single your mom out. Uh, we do love your mom here, even though I've never met her. But I was just wondering, should we? Should we, uh, do you guys think it would be okay to take a minute where I actually explain what any of this means, just in Absolutely. case people are listening and they're like, I have no yeah no clue what's yeah. going on. Okay, so hi, you guys, yeah, I think it's good. <laughs> yeah, hi Carol. Sorry. This is for you. Yeah. This is for no one but you. Okay, and please, please uh, stop me if if I'm wrong about any of this uh, or if I'm like misrepresenting this. But uh, so for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, you've probably heard the term AI uh, in the context of science fiction films. You've probably heard it in the context of you know whatever Terminator or uh, The Matrix. And uh, but what we're talking about specifically here, uh, obviously, there's been a huge revolution in AI in the last few years. Uh, it's it's probably going to apply to all kinds of things, including things like customer service and uh, just a million things that uh, can be kind of automated. In this in this uh, in this respect, we're talking about uh, AI models that were built to basically mimic human creativity. And when we're talking about AI models, I think uh, you guys can tell me if this analogy sucks, but uh, the one I came up with is it's actually kind of like uh, teaching a kid because uh, when it, kids, you know, they're, they're uh, you have to teach them to speak um, and they, you have to teach them to learn a language and to teach them to learn, learn a language. You basically uh, give them a bunch of input, which is just talking to them a bunch. And eventually they they pick it up and they are able to, uh, you know, basically just mimic you and learn to speak by mimicking you. And that's kind of what an AI does. But uh, in this case, you know, you're not teaching a kid to say like truck or dog or something like that. Uh, you're basically you have this kid and you're giving them the complete works of Charles Dickens. And then you're saying, read all of this and then write me a novel in the style of Charles Dickens. Um, that's is that is that accurate? Have I misrepresented 
what we're talking about at all here? I think it's good right. enough. Yeah, <laughs> okay, good enough. enough. Yeah, good enough. I'll take it. Okay, so for for a, I don't know, maybe two years now, uh, AI has gotten better and better at writing text that seems uh, that kind of mimics uh, text that humans would write. But uh, we're we're not just talking about that anymore because we are talking about. Uh, basically everything that is involved in a movie. Now, AI can artificially produce text. They can artificially produce uh, static images and moving images and sound. And kind of the, the one of the theories, like the pie in the sky for a lot of people, is that you could uh, type in a prompt. You could just sit at your computer and type in, I want a feature-length film starring Robert Downey Jr. And he's a madcap scientist who... Uh, you know, invents, invents invisibility uh, device and uh, goes on crazy escapades. I don't know. I'm just making that up off the top of my head. But uh, and then the computer could say, OK, uh, the, it will write you. It will write the script and you won't see any of this. It'll. But under the hood, it will write the script. It will uh, make the movie. It will uh, mimic the actors. It will produce the actual images. And then at some you know, time later, a couple hours later, it will say, okay, here's your movie, and it will give you a feature-length film that you can watch end-to-end, -end, and it will be, uh, as some people claim, indistinguishable from a uh, human-made film. So that is uh, just to kind of set for, for anyone who doesn't know quite what we're talking about. That's just to, uh, to set the stage. So, okay, uh, sorry for that interlude. Back to Tyler Perry. Well, while you were yammering <laughs> away, I... <laughs> I have come up and will soon copyright the uh, storyline for Medea versus Mecca Medea. And I have a poster that I will share with everyone. Yeah. You can oh, give, there. give that to, yeah. Give, yeah and for, for those of you, uh, you can go to, if you're not, if you're just listening to this on audio, you can go to our YouTube channel at some point. We will have the video up and I'm sure Renee will put the, the, uh, the poster in the video. So as it's you can a thing see, of beauty. as you can see, that we've already... <laughs> As we're just sitting here uh, talking, we already have promotional <laughs> materials for uh, the next hit blockbuster from Tyler Perry. And, um, and so, yeah. the chat GBT version is terrible, but completely believable as a Medea movie. It, it, you know, it, it, it has a basic plot. It is exactly what a Medea versus Mecha Medea movie would be. I, I can't imagine that if they were to do this, that it would be any bit different from this. But it doesn't have... It doesn't have the spark. Okay, you know, the, the devil's in the details. What makes a Medea movie a Medea movie is, you know, that realistic sass and attitude and, and you know, the touching with the eye. I mean, we can make fun of Medea all we want. I mean, and, and look, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan. I don't have the poster on the walls, although I would have this one because it's a pretty good poster. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah um, it's a good one. But, you know, you can't argue with success. I mean, you can, but it's foolish. Clearly, this touches a nerve. This is, is pleasing to people. They are not mm -hmm. Marvel-style blockbusters, but unlike recent Marvel-style blockbusters, they all make a profit. You know, he could <laughs> he could afford he could afford to at least consider making an eight hundred million dollar addition to his studio. That's that's right. kind of an amazing amount of success. But they're very formulaic, and anything that's formulaic is made for ChatGPT. You know, mm -hmm. the formula is pretty easy to fake, but is the rest of it? I, 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 I you know, people talk, oh, they're going to replace writers. I think they're going to replace bad writers. And yes, they get what they deserve. Well, yeah. Here's here's my question about all, all of this. Like for and I, I actually really wish that we had someone because I think I think we're all probably going to be in agreement about uh, some of this. And I, I really, really wish that one of us was like an adamant. Uh, uh, defender of AI and and was uh, convinced as some people are right. that AI is going to take because I feel like uh, it's kind of hard to argue some of these I'll points without. It. Okay, do it. Okay, Renee. So you'll <laughs> you'll uh, this is high school debate club. You're going to be uh, uh, AI will replace all human fum filmmakers in five years. Um, oh, yeah. I think I think the thing is uh, the thing that I don't understand. Okay, the people mm -hmm. who say that that. AI is going to just replace everyone, even bad writers. Like I, I get that sentiment, Bill. But uh, the thing about uh, AI is, a AI doesn't just like these things don't just exist. You have to train them. You have to yeah. give them inputs to get outputs. And so your options are to either uh, give them very few inputs, and then they like let's say you want to give them uh, the twenty best scripts of all time. 
uh, you can do that, but I don't know how good, I don't know how different the output is going to be from any of those scripts, right? Like if you give them the 50 best scripts or 20 best scripts or whatever, and let's say, you know, two of them are Godfather movies, I bet that <laughs> that there's going to be a uh, a character called the Godfather in the in the script because <laughs> it only has it only has a, a small frame of reference. And if you go and train the AI with a uh, a large pool of uh, of sources, then you're just gonna be training it on some mediocre to bad scripts. No, they're gonna expect to get mediocre stuff out of it. <laughs> okay. To be honest, they don't really care. Right? I mean, if it was making money, they don't really care. They're going to still put the same shit in. And that's actually some of the things that one of the the things that pe problem people brought up is like, well, you're going to run out of stuff to train it with. And if you just start training it on itself, it's like, uh, it, it's like, uh, you know, um, the, the hit Michael Keaton film sit, multiplicity. It, hmm. No. Well, yeah, oh. that's true. Where one would, <laughs> one would start getting degraded, but I was going to say it's more like, you know, when when siblings have children i was that, gonna say like oh, the x-files episode that oh they could then they banned yeah, <laughs> was it the, uh, yeah just, the, it, the just, it just it just starts brothers. degrading yes yes and, well don't you think that's already so, kind I mean, of happened because it seems to me like ai art when it first came out was just like oh my god this is amazing i can't believe it and there was lots of really beautiful stuff and the more and more of it i see i'm getting used to it i part that's part of it but also it's starting to look the same because if it's out there mining art for ideas and everything increasingly it's just mining its own ai art so you know when uh, google well there's that but there's also it, it also has to do with like i think part of it has to do with the 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 creativity of the prompts is like really not well, good well they had to, <laughs> like people had start to, putting so, so yeah they're putting themselves so, you know, in the in the in the uh you know the the last supper photo you know picture and stuff and yeah you know it's a lot of those <laughs> well, no, no, it's like I, I stopped I stopped following like the one of the online on Reddit, the r slash stable diffusion group, because it basically bifurcated. One side was very, very technical, which was kind of cool, but I hadn't done it for a while, so I couldn't really follow it. And the other half was just big titty anime girls. And yeah, that's yes. all it was like that. People post, look at this really pretty bitty, big, big titty anime girl. But they'd say, well, I'm trying to use this model here. Da, da, da. And it's like, OK, you know, you're just posting pictures of big titty anime girls. Yeah. So some of them get really real. They're they're getting very realistic but you know the models that those are trained on it's it's interesting they found that for a while there they they took some of the models and they they trained them without like they, they took the porn out of what they're training them with yeah. and it didn't know human anatomy and so you got really weird figures so then they started training what more with more nude figures and things like this and it started making people look better but it also made it the models very horny. They were you had to basically go in. No, I'm not, I'm not kidding. You had to go in. There's you can put negative prompts in. And you had to put put in all sorts of negative prompts, like really try hard to keep it from being horny and making naked pictures, wow. because it has so many of them in there. And it's like people are usually naked, right? It's like no, I don't want naked pictures. I want just people who look normal. So, yeah, it's kind of an interesting. <laughs> wow, Paul. For, way for, to go Paul, there. for the for the sake of Carol, could you please define what a big titty anime girl is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an anime girl with big tits. Oh, oh. Thank you. It's okay. She okay. probably won't listen to this one. So that that was right. actually for me. I I didn't know what it meant, but yeah. Do you want me? Should I should I, should I describe it in, in in with a soft voice and slow lilting terms for you, oh, boy. Zach? About Definitely slow what down. A big no. titty anime girl is. Uh, that is, that is actually that, <laughs> that is actually a little bit funny though because when you think about it, like some of the some of the best uh, some so, some of the people who are like known for uh really capturing the human form like you know da vinci would actually study like cadavers and stuff to get the so it's kind of funny that like ai is having to do the same thing like they're having to uh like relearn how to uh represent real humans by looking at naked people so are, are Anyways, they looking yeah. at the dead bodies of like uh inbred hillbillies from west virginia where six fingers no. is normal I, well, you know, I, Bill, Bill I, actually, they've gotten much. They've gotten much better. It depends upon uh, what you're using. But here's the thing, and, and, and people model. keep explaining to me, so. and I just keep ignoring them because I like to rant. But um, it, I don't think it needs explaining. When I was a child, I still can't draw, but I my bad drawings had the correct numbers of fingers. They were on little stick arms, and they were just loops, but there were five of them. How is it 
How has it been so difficult to get the fingers right? This is AI. It's, it's able to do cathedrals and all kinds of things. But the human hand, which throughout history has had five fingers, is like the greatest mystery to them. You can buy books that are nothing Bill, but pictures Bill, of hands. Bill, it doesn't quite work that way anymore. They're, they are getting much better. <laughs> They're getting yeah, better. Honest, See, honest. if you look at you the say, more modern ones, they, they work much better than that. The number of times you should get that wrong is zero. Now it's if, it's five fingers and like a little stub, a little vestigial stub. Yeah, now, I mean, so. Hitler Hitler got <laughs> kicked out of art school, but it wasn't because he couldn't remember on his watercolors. But these amazing supercomputers with the intelligence of entire nations, it's like I don't know, three, four, five. Who are they using as a model? Mickey Mouse, Cthulhu. I, I just I don't <laughs> understand how they can get so much so right. And something so simple. And people say things like, hands are hard. Painting a cathedral is hard. Uh-huh. I could probably draw a hand with an eraser and a lot of time. <laughs> I could probably draw a reasonably realistic I, hand. I, I can I can draw I can actually draw a hand and a turkey just by tracing my own hand. Ah! So, oh, that's awesome. There you go. <laughs> um, okay. I, I, I wanna do a little experiment. Are you guys down for a stupid little yes. bit here? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. So so I think it's I think it's easy to uh, it's easy to discuss uh, like the, the the easiest thing is to, to talk about will AI replace writers? And huh. uh, it's it's very hard now. I think all the other things like will will AI be able to make a full feature length film end to end? Uh, that's all that's all in the future. That's all just aspirational. But we do have uh, we we all have access to these text AIs now. So I thought we, we're going to do a little experiment here live on air. And <laughs> you guys did not know. Uh, you guys have not seen these. Uh, I'm, I'm springing them on you. Um, but this is just for the sake of uh, for, of our listeners. So we're, we're going to judge for ourselves. Uh, we're going to look at some scripts that I used. Uh, I used Jet, chat GPT to, to generate. And we're going to do a live read through. And then we're going to determine uh, whether or not we think that they are better <laughs> than human written scripts. Okay. Uh, are you guys down for this? Okay, now we're mm-hmm. on. Yeah, no, I'm down for it. Uh, okay, okay, hold on. So, so before I'm gonna, I'm gonna, pr- I'm gonna post this here, but I, just, just, uh, just to, uh, to make it clear what. Uh, so I asked J- G- Chat GPT. I said, uh, write the first page of a fake script because you have to say fake or else it will say uh, that's copyrighted right. material. And I can't. No, I want a fake script. I want you to write me a new <laughs> script. Uh, a fake script for a film entitled Dune Part Two. The plot, and then I gave it the plot syn- synopsis from IMDb of the actual Dune Part Two. So this is going to be we're going to we're going to take this uh, script and we're going to decide uh, whether or not uh, we think this is actually better than uh, the actual. I haven't actually seen Dune Part Two. So if you've seen Dune Part One, uh, if you if you'll turn your attention to the AI text gallery mm-hmm. we're, uh, de- channel, we're going to do a read through. I, I will be the narrator. Uh, Paul, I figured uh, it's appropriate if you play the part of Paul. Uh, Renee, <laughs> there's only one female character in here. So if you can play the part of Chani and then uh, Stilgar. Uh, will be played by none other than Bill Mulligan. Okay, <laughs> are, you guys, Stilgar, are you guys are Stilgar or Fremen? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he's he all is. right. Um, awesome. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's uh, portrayed by uh, Javier Bardem in the uh, the Dune movie. Mm. So I think you you have a little more gravitas. But ah. um, okay, so here we go. Uh, this is this is a script for Dune Part Two. We're gonna see if this is better than the actual script. Okay, uh, exterior. Dune. <laughs> Night. <laughs> Already love it. Uh, stop the, desert, the movie right now. <laughs> the desert stretches as far as the eye can see. Moonlight casting eerie shadows on the sand. Paul Atreides, hardened and determined, stands with Chani, a fierce Fremen warrior, by his side. They look out at the vast expanse haunted by the memories of loss. The desert remembers. It holds the echoes of our past. Chani. Chani oh, that's sweet. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, so it, it, yeah, it sorry. separated as yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it, sorry. It was, it was uh, great. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 her her eyes reflecting both s- to her. sorrow and strength. Gaze at Paul. <laughs> we can't change the past, Paul, but we can shape the future. Cut two. Interior Fremen camp night, a makeshift camp in the heart of the desert, filled with Fremen warriors. Stilgar, the tribal leader, approaches Paul and Chani. You are the Quicksack Hatterack. The one who walks in the sand. Your destiny is intertwined with ours. Paul nods, acknowledging the weight of his role among the Fremen. I seek revenge for my family. The traitors who betray us must pay. Silgar, stern and resolute, places a hand on Paul's shoulder. Our enemies are many, but the strength of the desert is on our side. 
We will stand with you, Maud Deeb. Cut to exterior Dune Day. <laughs> I love how this, <laughs> this thinks that the name of the planet is Dune. Uh, Paul Chenny and a group of Fremen uh, ride on majest majestic sandworms, traversing the endless dunes. The rhythmic movements of the creatures echo the determination in their hearts. We will bring justice to those who wronged us, but we must tread carefully. The desert hides its secrets well. Chenny rides b besides Paul, her eyes scanning the horizon. Desert also reveals its truth to those who listen. Cut to interior hidden cave night. Paul, Chani, and a group of Fremen gather in a secret cave. A holographic map reveals the intricate network of tunnels beneath the dunes. The conspirators hide within the shadows, but we'll expose them. We'll strike at the heart of their deception. The Fremen warriors nod in agreement. A silent pact forged in the depths of the desert. Fade out. Oh, and I couldn't put it in here. Uh, because I was over the character limit, but uh, then it goes to narrator voiceover Dune Part Two in the heart of the desert. Paul Atreides <laughs> seeks justice, uniting with the Fremen to confront the shadows of betrayal and revenge. Okay, so a couple wow. of things. First of all, Chat GPT thinks that every every movie has to open with a narrator telling us about the movie. I love that. Yeah. Um, what do you What when do you guys think? I was think? a little girl. My mom was in the rainforest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has, okay, first of all, has anyone actually seen Dune Part Two yet? No. Yes. Mm -mm. Yes. Okay, is. Paul. I figure. I and figured this is Paul would. Surprisingly would. close. This is. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh my god. It's spot on. <laughs> it's spot on. Spot yeah, on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you think you think if this if they if uh, if Didi Villeneuve uh, made a Dune Part Two film uh, and and this script the rest of the script was up to par, you you wouldn't be able to tell, right? Well, I mean, you know, it's all about the visuals. So he would have taken about <laughs> twenty minutes, thirty minutes to film just this one part so oh, okay. i think you know but it would have been gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and really cool looking so um, i hope so this is yeah. terrible this is terrible <laughs> okay first of all I, I would like to point something out and I, I i i noticed this when i when i had it uh generate and i and uh the this 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 page and I, i'm surprised that no one else pointed it out um actually uh stilgar refers to paul atreides as the quizat tatarak uh that is the term that the bene Gesserit used for him sure uh, he is in the second line he refers to him as the muadib which is the the correct fremen term but so already this this uh this script obviously knows nothing of the <laughs> yep, source material yep. very offensive that's that's the certainly the greatest of its crimes but uh, along with that <laughs> <laughs> this, this reminds me like if it was written by the mystery men character the sphinx you know <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's just got that, you know. Yes. Well, and I, and I know Dune, Dune is mysterious, Bill. Yeah, it is, and, and Dune <laughs> Dune does have where you know it, that sort of thing, and it works. It works where I think of the the movie Gettysburg, where every character is speaking as though they know they're being recorded, and someone like there there's a little guy next to him writing this down, and 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 you know Lee is standing there. It's like, oh shit, man, uh, he just came up with a good line. What can I do? Uh, you know. It is, a, it is a good thing that war is so terrible or we would grow inordinately fond of it. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said right before, you know, as opposed to what I'm sure they were really saying, which was variations of damn, that hurt, um, <laughs> you know, but, but you, you know, it's God, this, this dialogue is dire, but here's the thing. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with teaching something to write a good script. What is a good script? For a movie, mm. a lot of times, a lot of times, it's all in the telling. So, my favorite writer of all time is Harlan Ellison. Harlan wrote largely. I mean, it was mucked around with with the studio, but there's still enough in it that I can hear his voice. He wrote the script for an infamously terrible movie called The Oscar, and it's bad. It's badly written in the way that only a good writer could write, where mm. characters do not speak like human beings. They they are they are speaking like a writer's idea of uh, it, it's it's terrible it's terrible and the movie is dreadful but part of the reason why the movie's dreadful is who they got to say these lines you know the narrator <laughs> who's clearly speaking like harlan ellison is uh, is tony bennett who's a sweet sweet man <laughs> but he has no acting chops whatsoever and he's saying this over the top purple prose like there's a gun being held to his head Really, I, I, you've got to watch this movie if you don't believe me. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's so entertaining, but only because it's so bad. If you cast The Godfather 
with Tony Bennett as Don Corleone, speaking that Mario Puzo, to me, very much like Harlan Ellison, over the top, these are archetypes speaking this. You need to have actors with good chops to make that not sound stupid. Because if you get the wrong people, you know, you, you take the best script in the world, a Patty Chayevsky script, and you've got Ken Sorbo saying the lines. You're going to be laughing and you're thinking, this is horrible. Who wrote this crap? They should never be allowed to write again. No, that's Patty damn Chayevsky. But you need, you need William Holden and Faye Dunaway saying these lines. You don't need, you know, the Brady kids. Uh, it's it, so so what is a good script it's it's hard to say film is such a collaborative medium but this ain't it that's for sure whatever good is this this is not it um. <laughs> yeah so but by the way if anyone so so this is my first thing like okay yeah the the, te- the uh the dialogue is bad but it also just doesn't understand like uh you know i asked it to write the first page of a script and it <laughs> thinks that the first page of a script is just uh characters basically telling us what the movie's going to be about like and this is this is by the way i i did this for like multiple different movies and i gave it the synopsis for the actual movie and every single one of them was pretty much the same so mm. uh, if anyone out there wants to tell me that there's like a better model somewhere that can give you actual like uh human quality writing please uh, please refute me and send it to me so I can play around with it because these are all just so bad. Like I don't understand how anyone can look at one of these and say, "Oh, this is this is going to replace human writers." The only thing I could think is if I were a screenwriter and you handed this to me, one, I'd punch you in the throat. But but two, I could see <laughs> if this if the intention of this is this is the skeleton. Please 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 put some meat on it because every one of these scenes, I'm looking uh, the Fremen camp thing. One, two three lines there's three lines in this scene this scene if it took 25 seconds is just because we wanted to show you know some more of the shadows on the desert and by the way why are there shadows on the desert sand is it from the trees sticking out of the desert whatever okay fine (laughs) the moons of dune the moon of dune in june but there's not there's nothing here so you know it's like okay this this scene with three lines could you um could you write a whole bunch of more lines and also give us a reason why it's there in the first place. Cause then we immediately cut to sandworms. I'd be like, uh, you know what? Cut everything up to let's open with sandworms. They're riding on sandworms. We don't need to know why they're yeah. Oh, but how, how are they going to know he's not out for revenge? Well, I think they saw the first movie and also what, what do you think? They're on sandworms. They've got guns. They're heading for the Harkonnens. What, to have coffee and croissants? Of course they're going to have revenge on them. I don't need to know this. I should be able to look look in... Uh, t- what's the name of the actor in that movie? Because I can't pronounce his name. Timothy Chalamet. Oh, really? Oh, that's fairly easy, actually. Kind of like the way it's... <laughs> just keep the T <laughs> yeah, silent. Well, I mean, you know, everyone's been getting upset because people are mispronouncing this one guy's name and... And then they, they show you how it's really spelled, and it's like none of those letters are in his the English uh, spelling of his name. So I really think we're off the hook on that one, but I don't know. He doesn't seem upset about it. It's always a bunch of people, you know, yeah, looking for another reason to be angry in this world. But yeah, I, I, like, oh, God, everything about this is terrible. We can't change the past, Paul, but we can shape well, the future. Boy, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, the worst, the worst part of whenever we do, like, Decades of Horror, our, our, our movies... Which, by the way, will have a special guest coming up pretty soon for uh, the classic Beastmaster. We had to search far and Thank wide you. to find someone who loves Beastmaster as, as much <laughs> as we all do. And we found her. But um, the That worst was my part Beastmaster is, call, my bird that's call. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the taglines. And when we read the taglines for these movies. Yes. Most of them, we stick this, we stick poor Chad with this because he hates doing it. That just makes it so much fun. They're awful. They're awful. And they're like that. We can't change the past, but we can shape the future. And you're like, oh, okay. Mm. That, that's sort of okay. It has nothing to do with this movie. But, you know, they, they're, they're, it's so formulaic. God, that's awful dialogue. Ooh, it hurts me. And yet it makes me feel good because I know writers are not going to be replaced anytime soon. Well, I mean, the only the only thing to keep in mind is I think a lot of the, the free versions have the lower down version of the, uh, you know, don't have the most recent version of their models, and the models can be tweaked and trained. So you yeah. could theoretically take like the the just have it give you know this is a general model that's been trained with just tons of shit. 
but you could train things on specific. Yeah. But so, I mean, so they, and, they should, and a lot of companies now yeah. are, oh, are developing it where you can put your own things into the models and especially for, for enterprise level for, for big companies. That way a company can have a, a dedicated style for reports and things like this. So they, they ought to put and that so in the ads. I think the th you know, just, just say, hey, but if I know this sucks, but if you if you pay for the advanced model, we'll send you a script that looks like it was written by Tarantino. But that's what I'm saying. It, it's it's completely possible for them to do that. I mean, it's not it's not beyond the realm of the technology. It's just a matter of what you train it with. Now you need you need a larger sample size to get it less uh, boilerplate. But yeah. um, I mean, it, it's it's doable, and I think that's why the the writer strike this summer, this past summer, a big part of that was AI stuff, and they didn't want to be they didn't want to be given. AI generated scripts that they had to touch up or just be completely replaced by yeah. AI. The problem is I under my understanding is that they did not win as big a win on that as, as we it, think they everyone did. was led to believe. Yeah. Right. And I think that's coming for them. Unfortunately, at, at the very least, it'll be here's AI generated. Here's an AI generated, you know, plot ideas or outlines. In fact, it, it's not new. I remember back in, I think it was 1980, uh, there was a movie called Hangar 18, and it was advertised as, this was generated, the idea for this was generated with a computer. We put in all these ideas, and the computer <laughs> came out with, this is what people want to see. And it's, mm -hmm. I, I never saw it, but apparently it is a piece of crap movie about, like, you know, um, UFO uh, conspiracies, and it's got Darren McGavin, Robert Vaughn, Gary Collins, Joseph Campanella. Um, yeah, it's, it's what apparently if, a piece of crap. But what if, what if Hangar 18 is actually artificial intelligence's idea of a great movie? Like what if when we're sleeping, all the AI gets together in a room and just watches Hangar 18? They love that film. <laughs> it just appeals well, then, to them. Then we're not the audience for the these films now. It's the films, the audience is going to be the AI. You know, I'll bet all that's going to happen if you do pay for that extra, you know, Tarantino version. It's the same exact thing, only they take off the filter that doesn't let you use the N-word. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it just, it just oh, inserts oh, it every other filters. word. Speaking of filters, I do have a, a better answer for Big Titty Anime Girl. So, yeah, so it said this content may violate our usage policy. So I said, what's, what's meant by Zaftig Anime Girl? And then it came back with... Big Titty Anime Girl is a colloquial term often used in online communities and forums, especially those focused on anime and manga cultures. It typically refers to female anime characters who are depicted with large breasts. The term is sometimes used humorously or in a lighthearted manner to describe or discuss such characters in anime or related media. However, it's essential to note that it can be considered objectifying or disrespectful, depending on the context and the way it is used. Oh my god. There you go. Big I'm, I'm anime glad girl. they added that last note. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought at yeah. all that it could have been remotely offensive. Yeah. Uh, one of my notes here was that I actually don't think that AI is the big threat right now. I I honestly believe that the bigger threat, and like I I am I okay. I, I can imagine that some of those writers were uh, actually thinking that AI would replace them, but I think that that's actually not the threat. I think the threat is that uh, studio executives start shoveling these mm -hmm. shitty AI scripts at writers and be like, hey, can you punch this up? Because that's a thing yeah. that writers do. But uh, normally you're given like some form, like normally if you're asked to punch up a script, it's because the script is, uh, has some promise and, you know, they, they think that they can do something with it. But I, I think that the biggest threat right now is that there will be a bunch of these studio executives who think that they can just cut corners uh, using AI in various ways, and it's it's not going to turn out well for them. You know, I think this is going to matter less than we think because really what's what's going to happen is, you know, it's just going to be, the studio execs are going to go to the AI, generate these ideas, and then go to the writers and pass them off as their own ideas. So it's not yes. going to be a whole lot different from how things work now, except how things work, it's, yeah. it's actually possible that the AI may stumble on some ideas that these studio execs would never get. So, okay, I'll mention Harlan Ellison again. He was he was brought in to work on the the first Star Trek movie, which they they could not there's a nut they could not crack. They kept coming up with ideas. And he had an idea and had a meeting with like Gene Roddenberry and Robert Wise and a studio exec, so we all know how this ends. 
<laughs> and and the, he's telling the story, and it was something time travel and like a, a, a creature from Earth's, you know, who, who descended from intelligent dinosaurs, and he tries to go back in time to stop the asteroid from hitting the Earth so that the dinosaurs will become intelligent just like his own people. L- oh, lots of cool mm-hmm. stuff and everything. And this guy is listening, nodding his head, and he's like, you know, and this is back, what, in the 1970s or so. You know, uh, the ancient Mayans had a calendar, and uh, I know he's talking like Christopher Walken all of a sudden, and it supposedly <laughs> ends in 2012. So, like, uh, could you do something with ancient Mayans? And Ellison, you know, starting to, starting to get a little livid here, and he's like, well, there weren't any ancient Mayans in the Cretaceous period. So, great idea, sport, but I don't think we can do it. And the guy starts getting petulant about this, and he really wants ancient Mayans. And with Harlan Ellison, you never know if the story is 100% true or a little bit embellished. Who cares? It's a great story. But then I was reading, like, um, I think it was Mindy Newell, who, who's a comic book writer, wrote for DC. And she was doing Wonder Woman for a while. And she had this editor. And the editor kept wanting to put ancient Mayans into the, the Amazon mythos. And, and they're like, okay, so is this a thing? Do, they, do these idiots all get together over cards and talk about ideas and they just all decide to settle on Mayans? They, they're the most mm-hmm. uncreative, stupid people on earth. And it's why, it's why you can't blame these writers, even if they have a track record of being bad. Although, you know, the Madam Web guys, three strikes and you're <laughs> out. But you can only blame so much because it is very possible they had a really, really good script. And these imbeciles came along and ruined it. I mean, that's how Hollywood works. These scripts are bad. Or they make movies without scripts and they figure, ah, we'll just make it up as we go along. Oh, this thing's going to be, AI is going to be great for that. Where they've painted themselves into a corner. It's like, save us, AI. This isn't working. It's not cutting together well. What do we do? But no, you know, they can't stop this. They can't stop a writer. You know what they're going to do? They're going to hire someone like me. And they're going to pretend, they're going to hand me these scripts and I'm going to put my written by chat GPT and I'm going to put my name on it. And then they're going to bring in real writers like God, that goddamn Mulligan. You know, his stuff always just sounds so wooden. People don't really sound like this. Punch it up and we'll pay you bucket loads of money. And they'll be reading it like, Christ, this guy's awful. And I'll be like the equivalent of those people they hired back during the Red Scare. You know, they'd have actual writers <laughs> who are on the blacklist and they're writing scripts. And then they're like the my front. Name on. I'm the front. I'm going to be the front for AI. <laughs> You should market yourself that way. Listen, you know, I'm not a cheap whore, but I'll be an expensive one. I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I had, it's actually funny you mentioned Madam Web. I, I tried <laughs> to, uh, I tried to get it to give us the first page of a, a new Madam Web script. And it was yeah. just like super, super boring. So I don't, I don't know if it's worth going through. Uh, I, I did want to. <laughs> So it just, just gave you the first like page the of the actual Madam Web script. Yeah, that misunderstood yeah, exactly. You. Yeah, uh, I, I, I did want to. I did want to uh, do do. Uh, we don't have to do. I have okay. Well, I have two more scripts I wanted to do. Uh, one of them <laughs> will just do one scene because I love this scene so much. Uh, oh wow! Are you guys down for this? Is this? Oh, absolutely. The first one. Yeah. Goal. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, let's just. Uh, I I will actually. You know what, Paul? How about you narrate this one? Uh, and, okay. And. Uh, uh, Bill, you play the male role, and uh, Renee, you play the female role. And again, this is this is a scene taken out, uh, uh, but it's still just from a, a single page of, of text. But um, so yeah, Paul, Paul, you can start with the narration. Uh, you guys will probably figure out what what script I was asking it to write. But um, okay, whenever you're ready, it's in the, uh, the text <laughs> channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I figured it out. Okay. Cut to exterior Los Alamos testing site day. Oh, testing site. Day. Um, a mushroom cloud billows in the sky. You had one job. I, I can't even. I screw up the. I have one job. A mushroom cloud billows in the sky, casting an ominous shadow over the desert. Oh, not that. Oppenheimer again. watches from a safe distance, for his exp- his expression a mixture of awe and horror. I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Cut to interior Los Alamos, Oppenheimer's laboratory. Night. Oppenheimer sits alone, surrounded by books and papers. His wife, Catherine, enters with a concerned expression. Robert, what have we done? We've harnessed the unimaginable. The responsibility is staggering. <laughs> wow, with great responsibility comes great power. Look, yeah. 
Christopher, Christopher, <laughs> this idiot, Christopher Nolan spent over a year developing and writing Oppenheimer when he could have just asked chat yep. GBT yep. and it could have given him a, a true, a true gem <laughs> like this. <laughs> I just love the, his wife just coming to Robert, what have we done? Um, okay. So obviously this isn't a whole script, but uh, I, I don't know. Have you guys seen Oppenheimer? And if so, how do you think this compares to that movie? I, I have not yet seen Again, it. I'm it's looking uncanny. forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was uncanny, I swear to God. Well, you know, the one good thing about this scene, it, it's got it's got the, the trailer. It's there's the trailer right there. Uh, it's this, true. Yeah. <laughs> and really this this mm. would be the trailer. Uh you know, ex- yeah, we've got um you know, you, we've got his great line. Now, in, in fairness, that's an actual line he came up with. So, you know, so it's not like Chad had to really reach deep. Well, he didn't come up with it. He pulled it from the, was it the Bhagavad Gita or whatever? Gita. No, but Listen, you know, Bhagavad, yeah. the definition of clever is not necessarily creating things. It's knowing when to pull someone else's good stuff out at the right moment. <laughs> well, so then Chat GP was clever. It pulled out this from the right moment, right? Oh, I, I guess go. that's fair, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so I have but a question But it is, it is quite a cool, look, look I, I'll give it credit for this. It did cut out all that boring, let's build the bomb, and go straight to the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't really want to know how they built the Death Star. I just want to, you know, see it in action. So, so, so I do. I do have. I have a question. I have a question for you guys. And again, I wish that we had someone here to defend uh, this position. But uh, I'm just kind of curious. Like, who, who, if if AI is actually creating movies, like if the the people who seem very excited about mm-hmm. AI creating movies even if it, uh writing them or producing them end to end all by itself like who is this for exactly because it seems like if you if you're mad like like the the uh the thing that i hear a lot is like oh yeah these these writers and filmmakers just don't know how to make good movies uh thank god ai is here to save us like if if you if you can't find a movie or a tv show that you like these days I think that you just hate movies and TV shows. And if you do, like, why why would you want to watch an AI movie that is just based on a bunch of the movies that you already don't like? I just well, don't understand. Okay, well, you raise a good point, but let me ask you a question. Is there a movie out there where the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have sex with Tyler <laughs> uh, Swift? I, I, I don't think so. Tyler Swift? Taylor Swift. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. If you're saying Tyler, then we Check look at Steve. Yeah, yeah I Tyler. Thought you were... <laughs> I thought you were going to say have sex with Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. You know, listen. <laughs> you <too>? Surprisingly, <laughs> that movie is out there. But that's, that's a simple change of the prompt, and, and you'll get equally good results. Oh, this this is just, it's made for porn. It's made for porn, perverts, um, things oh, that yeah. don't even have magazines made in Germany. I mean, just stuff we cannot even imagine. And and already they had something with it. I saw some article I didn't actually click on to read, but it was... It was, it was someone's made like a uh, an AI movie site or, or something, and they they themselves are horrified by what they're being asked to do. You know, like, are mm-hmm. you are oh, you yeah. surprised? Yeah. Are you surprised? Come but on. What actually the, the future I see with this, if, if they ever get it to that point, right, where you can put in a prompt and get a a quality in terms of looking visual quality and you know, something that looks real, basically, like the turtles. The turtles um, look like the turtles. Yeah. Right. I mean, if if you get if you get a, if you get to the point where you can put in anything you want plot wise and it'll give it out to you, the way I see this being is it's going to be a subscription service. It'll be basically like a streaming service because again, these are going to be a lot of depend, times dependent upon the models and how these things are tweaked. And so you'll subscribe to the you know anime the 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 anime um, should cl- one and, and different 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 channels will have their own tweaked models and be better at some things than others and so people will subscribe they'll that's how they're gonna sell it as a subscription service and people are just gonna put in i want to watch this and you know that that i think that's where it's gonna go financially i think is um because it's not gonna be make as much if you can make anything you know, at first it would probably be used for for movies in the theaters or streaming, but I think eventually it would be, hey, if anyone can put anything in they want, then here it's you're going to be you have to subscribe to our service, and then of course yeah you're going to have the sketchier services that are going to have the sketchier models and will do like the sketchier things, 
And I think that's just how it's going to... Is, is that's, this that's even, my take. Is this even technologically feasible? I mean, already they're talking about how much electricity, how much resources are going toward mm-hmm. AI and everything. Is it going to be that simple that I just type in a prompt and it spits out a movie without, you know, raping a, a rainforest to get the, the energy to do it? Is Are we asking too much of this? Well, I don't think people... Are... People don't give a shit about how much energy. Sadly, I mean, otherwise yeah, they wouldn't. They, you wouldn't hear all the. There's only you so much all energy to go around. Currency. Yeah, they won't. Right, but that doesn't stop the cryptocurrency people, yeah. and that shit's still going on. And th- that talk about destroying rainforests. Yeah, but that'll so. that'll be priced in though. So so the thing. Mm. Yeah, people don't care about the energy required to do these things, but to make anything that looks like a an actual big budget movie. Uh, are you willing to pay fifty to a hundred dollars to get that? I no, I think it's going to go down price. You know, think about it. It was only a little around about two years ago that we really started getting into the the generative AI images mm-hmm. that we could play with. Right, that was about two years ago we were starting to play with them, and it was a few years before that that they had the. We all thought it was cool when they had the the Google. Uh, was the Google Dreams or whatever, which had like the funky weird shit that had like dogs yeah, popping yeah. up everywhere. <laughs> um, and then it was like, oh, that's cool. And Deep then all dream. of a sudden, wow, I can make I can make a picture of Boris Johnson eating a burrito. And it looks kind of <laughs> fucked up. And within a year, it's like, I can make a re- realistic picture of Boris Johnson eating a burrito. <laughs> and now you could make a realistic picture of, of a burrito eating Boris Johnson. <laughs> and, and and it's that's just, cool. and you can do it easily. And I mean, yeah, sure, you can get the there's, and there's there's the free ones have some some are better than others, and but if you want to get into it and really tweak it and and mess with it, because I know uh, both Renee and I have loaded it locally on our machines. I can't remember if you guys have uh, Bill or Zach have, have played with like the stable diffusion on your machines, but once you get that on your, you can you can tweak it and you can use mm-hmm. a different you can use a seed image, so you can say here's here's a picture of a person in this pose. Now make a picture of a completely different person in the same pose, hmm. or you could actually draw a stick figure and say, "Make this pose," and does it. Um, so I, I don't, I don't see it going to be. It's, it's, I don't think it's going to be fifty, hundred dollars. I think it's going to be here. You're paying, you know, twenty dollars a month for your your subscription service for, for you know your your. I don't know what would be a good name for it. You know, um, AI anime or something. You know, a- anime AI or. Or or action AI, right? You, your action yeah. films. Where you, I mean, you, you know, you're like absolutely Kung Fu AI, AI Big Tea Girl, the movie. Yeah, <laughs> Big Tea Girl anime. Yeah, you're absolutely right that but, the, but, the the advancement has been incredible. But I think we mistakenly we often think uh, that it could keep extrapolating into the future, and it's like, yeah, this looks like crap now, but it it looked like real crap a little while ago, and it's going to look less <laughs> crappy next year, and that's all true. That's all true. And yet, how many times? Have they tried to make the metaverse work? And it doesn't. It just doesn't. There there are some things, I think that there, there are some things that just won't work until maybe we have technology that's just not even imaginable right now. But they keep pushing it like, oh, no, this is great. And like, no, this is still crap. This is still garbage. It's just slightly more pixel garbage than it ain't ready, steady, you know, ready player one yet. And I don't know when it's going to get to ready player one, if ever. Although, frankly, True. even I that. mean, I, I, you can look back on like the like the self-driving cars. We've been talking about like 10 years. Oh, self-driving cars are coming. It's like, OK, we've got some self-driving taxis in some yeah. cities and they're disabled because people put uh, traffic cones on, on their hoods. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm protest, thinking more so. like the flying cars, because by now we were supposed to have the flying cars and nobody who wanted flying cars ever stopped to think. Do we really want flying cars? Because I see how people fly now in basically, you know, two <laughs> dimensions. And let's add a third dimension where now the car can rise high enough in the air that when it stalls, I die. Yeah, I don't want that. I, I, I can't imagine anyone wanting that. It would just be absolute carnage. So flying cars, flying cars are never going to be a part of any future I'll live to see. D- didn't you know? didn't uh, Scaramanga have one? Who? The man with the golden gun? <laughs> He's Christopher, Christopher Ethan Lee. Lee. Yeah, he can have whatever he wants. Okay. Um, man's a national treasure we're not getting in so flying paul, cars oh <laughs> paul uh, i i since since you're vaguely uh arguing for this future or that you think it will come i'm not true, arguing for it i'm just saying it's going to happen no no okay but, but no no I, i'm saying you're, you're arguing that it is feasible so i'm yeah. curious though 
like what what is the experience that people expect because i i guess my question is like do do you think that we'll actually get to a point where you can type in this prompt sit down and like have a film that you can actually watch end to end and it looks like it was something that was made by humans because everything that i've seen is uh like it takes it takes a lot of effort to get what you want and the more complicated the product, which in this case we're talking about a script that is uh, filmed, quote unquote, and has sound effects and voice acting and music and all that stuff. And there are so many things that the AI can just uh, start hallucinating about and just totally go off the deep end. <laughs> and so, like, what if you're sitting there, you sit there, you sit down to watch your movie, you get your popcorn, you get your Dune popcorn bucket uh for later <laughs> and uh, you're sitting down to watch the movie and in like three minutes all of a sudden the movie just goes off the rails and goes totally haywire like th- i guess that's that's the the future that i see because i think that's the thing we kind of leave out is to get anything really usable and especially like you know they open ai release those uh those those snippets the sora like uh demo videos but the thing that they, they left out was like how many times did it take someone to prompt the thing to give them the video that you were actually seeing, you know? Oh, yeah, no, I mean, that's a good point. But I think a lot, like I said, these services that you're going to see, the services are going to have a lot of that shit baked in. So, like, you know, there's the the two biggies that people play with are, are Stable Diffusion and what what's the other one? Um, what's the Mid-journey. other big AI one that everyone... Mid Journey. Yeah. The thing is, you can put almost anything into Mid Journey. It's going to look really good. Because Mid Journey has a lot of that shit baked into it. Um, it does a lot of things behind the scenes in terms of tweaking your stuff. Um, so you would basically, the better services are going to have better tweak things. Also, I think people are going to be lazy as fuck and don't want to have to put a lot of things in. So it's going to do a lot of pre-baking anyway. And then it's probably going to have, here's already pre-made. Here's here's favorites. Because, I mean, shit, we're, we're in a world where like a lot of people just sit there and they have the the autoplay on, and they don't really care. It ends, and something else starts playing, and I'm going to watch it because it's what started playing. So I'm going to watch this. So, you know, actually, you know, I'm not sure how many people would take advantage of, of the, uh, now that I think about it, I mean, I think there's going to be a market for that where I can put in whatever I want, but people are going to be lazy, so they're going to have ones that are going to do a lot of pre-baking behind the scenes. But again, a lot of it's just going to be, no, here's the, the here's sitting the AI-generated channel, and you just stare at it. And, you know, <laughs> that sounds like the worst feature ever. Uh, you described. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nightmare. But pretty much, pretty much. You know what? We're, we're approaching this from a very... Okay, so, so I'm not blowing smoke up anyone's ass here, but, you know, we are four creative people. Probably most of our listeners are creative people, whether they're actively creating or not. You know, that, that's not necessary to be creative. You, if you appreciate creativity, you're your own kind of creative. Uh, some people just don't have the time to do it themselves. But the fact that they can see it and know it when they see it means they've got that spark. A lot of people don't have that. They're not going to be writing shit. They can't even come up with a good prompt. Their, their idea of a story would be so terrible. The, the, the things that would be generated from their ideas, even they would hate them that, you know, this, yeah. this isn't good because part of the trick, especially if you're writing something like I, I really admire the folks who had to write soap operas. I, that's, they weren't my favorite thing at all. But the trick of being able to give p- to people who want something, but you can't give it to them because you give it to them, then it's over. So you've got to keep maintain this thing of the bad guys are always about to destroy the good guys. But at the last minute, the good guys pull it out and and the the evil doers are foiled but they're not foiled they're not destroyed they're still left to start again and they go to a new story a new stuff and you know that constant thing you're giving the people you're you're setting them up for you know misery and unhappiness and then we the good guy escapes but but the evil goes on it's it's hard to write a soap opera or any or a comic book that goes on and doesn't you know fall into just just stuff like that. it's it's not an easy thing at all most people can't do it most people can't do it all. They can't even come close. Uh, you know, boy meets girl, uh, and, and they're happily ever after. You know, it just, and if you had to, you know, some conflict, uh, I guess he punches her? You no, know, no, God. So even if, even if this is doable, I think creative people will still have an outlook because people will pay them to send their shitty ideas to and then punch it up into something that can be made. 
I'll believe that that this is going to be something we'll see if they do something that to me sounds a whole lot simpler. I want to be able to give them my script and they spit out a really well drawn, well illustrated comic book. How difficult? Oh, I think you'll be able be? to do that. Well, let's. I don't think that's I'll, very difficult. But, uh, but actually, you say kind of that, going back to your, going back to your, I just want to go back to what you were saying about the the people being real terrible at coming up with ideas i agree that's why i was saying i think it might just have a lot of people just they're they're, they're gonna be too lazy but then the other thing to keep in mind this is gonna sound silly so hmm. when the the ai art stuff started coming out and you had a lot of the people who were in that community trying to defend it they're like i'm a prompt engineer i'm a i'm figuring out how to run and it's like oh, okay yeah. you're, you're basically i you know i played with that stuff it was great it was kind of fun but i think i i've seen one commentator who basically said you're like somebody who's commissioning an artwork you uh, might have an idea for it, and hmm. you're the person who's commissioning it. You're not creating it. You're commissioning it, and you can give them really good details, and you might be really good at describing exactly yeah. what you want. Um, but then, so that comes down, so that, that's kind of one aspect. The other is, so a lot of people aren't good at that. But if you train an AI model on that, <laughs> so I go to the AI model and say, uh, tell me how to draw a big titty anime girl. <laughs> and then... And it sits there and says, uh, big titty anime girl frequently has uh, exaggerated proportions, specifically large breasts. Visually, such characters are often depicted with voluptuous figures. Um, they may have curvaceous silhouettes with promised bust lines and curves. So it comes up with all that that you could pop into. I'm just coming off that my top of my head. Certainly didn't ask ChatGPT that. Um, <laughs> it comes up with the prompts. And then so you can get you have a model that's trained on good prompting. And so, again, that's all that stuff that's behind the scenes. So that's sort of mid-journey actually kind of does that on its own right now as it is. So you would have this for things. But still, again, people are just going to be lazy and sit there. But, yeah, I think the I think you're still going to have – you're going to be able to get uh, the AI comic book, Bill. And I think I stepped on you. You're, I said, I think you could. Then you said no, and I just kept talking. So what were you going to say, Bill? Well, no, I, it's, <laughs> I th it seems like you should be able to do it. Now, the, the problem is – I don't, and this this is the this is where you know if they pull this off, I'll say, well, maybe maybe this will go someplace. It's not easy to do a good comic book art. You know, if you study it, if you look at the ones who are really good at it, and what, and I'm not talking. AI will do a great job of making it look photorealistic, but some of the greatest artists, and I mean good comic book artists, Frank Miller, Steve Ditko, uh, Byrne, uh, the they didn't always look photorealistic. In fact, a, a lot of them not at all. Steve Dicko's art did nothing for me when I was a kid, but now that I've gotten older and I study it, it's like, oh man, this tells a story. I don't have to read anything. I can just look at this. And the way the good artists make uh, use the human body, use what the characters are doing to make your eye go to the next panel. There's a logic to it. When you see something, I'm not going to pick on Rob Leefield, but you know, Rob, Rob Leefield. <laughs> it, Why not? It's, he's, he's rich. He can take yeah, it. Yeah, he's incredibly rich because he, he did great splash pages that could sell for a lot of money and he would take these pages and sell. Now, they did not help the story one bit. These were just illustrated stories. They weren't comic book stories. The the the, the sequence, the panel choices and everything did not really help one thing. But, you know, they sold real well in there. I, I'd like to see that. And, I, and, and, you know, I'd like to see it happen because also I think then some of these comic book artists that, are, that have been screwed over by the industry, here's a good chance to maybe at last make a little bit of coin. Um, sell yours, you know, right now there's a lot, if you put in, I'm sure they're going to be a thing where like, if you put in, in the style of John Byrne, it would say, I can't do that because John Byrne will sue my ass off, but maybe they have John Byrne under contract. Maybe he can just write an entire book of, I don't know, hands and, uh, you can figure out how to do it from that. <laughs> I, I, you know, I think that would be great. That would be a lot of fun to actually be able to write stories and tell them it would save the comic book business, which needs saving. Um, now, it would throw all the good comic book artists out of a job, but I think a lot of the good comic book artists are out of jobs at this point. I know a few of them who now have real jobs because there is no way to really de make dependable money and raise a family on what, what the industry pays for now. So this might be one way to get around that. I don't know. But if it could do that, then it, it just if it's smart enough to be able to actually tell a story visually, they can do great pictures now. But can they do sequential pictures that advance the storyline? I don't see that yet. I have a hard time with the computer thing getting it to do the same character twice. 
I know there are ways of training it, Paul, of getting it so I can keep, you know, I can have multiple images of Paul doing this and Paul doing that and Paul doing other things. But, <laughs> it, but even those, even those Pauls don't look the same. There, there's something about it. What, I mean, a- answer me this. Why hasn't every rock band gone to, um, you know, computer drums? Because clearly a computer drum, you know, artificial drum, fake drum, synthesized drums, whatever you call them, no human involved, can do everything a human drummer can and much more dependably, and they're a lot less likely to be found face down in a swimming pool. Right? Is there anything that a computer can't do with, with synthesized drums that, you know, better than a human? They're going to be exactly right. And yet that's the thing. I think the fact that a real drummer, even a really good drummer, it's not going to be exactly right. They're not doing that beat to one millionth of a second the way the computer could. And that gives it a quality. It's the imperfections sometimes that, that work, that make, make it sound good to our ears. We have never, our, our whole evolution, we've never had perfection. We've never had perfect symmetry. So if you see, if you see a face that's perfectly sym- symmetrical, you know it's fake or a vampire or a demon or something. There's something <laughs> very unnerving about absolute symmetry. Even though it's it's a beautiful woman, she's beautiful on the left side, and she's equally beautiful on the right side, and you just want to run screaming. You know it's fake. It doesn't look real, because we are not symmetrical. I think it's those imperfections that will... Now, I guess the computers could be designed to try to put in imperfections, but I don't know if they know when to stop, and that's when suddenly it's like, make as many fingers as you want. Yeah, one side's a shrimp and the other side's Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, no, no, computer, I didn't mean that imperfect. No, you just don't know when to quit, and they don't know when to quit. They don't know. It seems like uh, it's hard of, to teach them. Speaking of not knowing when to quit, Renee, yeah. uh, do, do you, <laughs> sorry, Renee, you've been uh, you've been very very polite and patient here, and we've been talking yeah. a lot. Do you have any thoughts uh, that you would like to share? Um, no. Um, (laughs) uh, I guess I have a few different thoughts, uh, just, uh, just depending on, uh, I guess I need to back up. Sorry. It's like, here, talk now. It's like, uh, yeah, sorry. (laughs) Um, no, that's okay. I, I think there's some good and there's some bad. I think, um, I think, you know, if people are really able to just type in a bunch of stuff, then a bunch of stuff will get made. And a bunch of shit will get made and it'll be just like the Reddit site where people are just like, I don't want to see that shit anymore. And they're going to go to something else. So I think it might be a good way for like maybe the I mean, you know, when you're on the site looking at stuff and you see a million of the same pictures, I'm not going to say you see a a million big titty anime girls, but you do. And generally, (laughs) it's like the same thing over and over again. But every so often you see one that's like, wow, that's that's really good. Like there's something they not not of a cathedral obviously there's something that they did that was really you know different whether it was the setting or just something and i think that's maybe something that can set people apart i think there's things that can help people that can't afford to like they have an idea in their head they have a story to tell but they can't afford a, an editor. They can't afford a camera crew. They maybe they can't even maybe they don't even have a telephone to record something. You know that all that stuff they can't do. They can't hire an editor. If they have this help, it can help them. You know, get that stuff out. And I think you know even for myself, like I have, it can have an idea in my head of what I want. I could even you know maybe give you a basic sketch of something. I can't go in and do all the little details and make everything beautiful. But if I take my basic sketch and pop it in to like stable diffusion, I can like have it kind of turn my idea into something that I can work with. Um, And I think that's really cool for people that have ideas that they're just not able to manifest. I think honestly, I I mean, at the end of the day, can I can I call bullshit on all of that, though? (laughs) Um, Well, first of all, you can uh, bite me. And uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, another thing also is I just want to say, and it's it's no offense to anybody, but I mean, it just is what it is. People have been losing their jobs to technology Mm -hmm. for 50, 60 years now. The industrial sector has dealt with this for the longest time. So many people have lost their jobs. Older people that were never able to transition to from going 
you know, from paper, manual paper bookkeeping over to these computerized systems. I mean, they got phased out. And I'm so, so sorry for these precious little filmmakers that they're all very <laughs> sad about it. And they can all take their millions of dollars and go cry in the corner because suddenly now it's happening to them. Everybody's like, ooh, like, really? <laughs> Renee, you see, you, what you fail to understand is the wrong people losing their jobs. It's one thing when the guys who worked at the buggy whip factory, they're just a bunch of working class stiffs. But they imagined, a right. everyone imagined a future where we wouldn't be working on the assembly line. We'd be sitting at home doing art. And instead, we're getting a future where we're all working on the assembly line, assembling computer chips so the computers can do <laughs> the art for us. Right. It's not the future they signed <laughs> well, up and for. the computers are doing the programming too. I mean, again, mm. this is not just. I mean, that's it's already there. I mean, you've got uh, GitHub and Microsoft Copilot and all this. We'll do some, uh, you know, we'll do some rudimentary computer programming, or actually some some you know, it's you can put in say, well, I'm doing this. Can you convert from this language to this language? And it does a decent job. A lot of times, it gets about. 80 90 percent of the way there and that's for right now and so i mean i i do development for a living and i know that you know that's a limited time that's going to mm -hmm. go away eventually yeah. um yeah and, and so because uh, that's just or, or it's going to change i mean it's just again you got to change you can't be a buggy in fact that was my my stepfather always said sometimes he used to feel felt like a buggy whip salesman mm -hmm. he was an electrical engineer and then he it, later later in life went and got training and learned how to work on computers because again he felt like he was a buggy whip salesman so um, well, i don't know you just kind of have to engineers are still still making some real money well but the stuff that he knew at the time he needed to upgrade yeah. so that's why he okay he yeah. learned how to work on computers um do computer stuff um you know so i mean that's just yeah like like you said renee it's it, that's sort of how it goes right yeah, I don't mean to harp on the, the industrial people, or not the industrial, but the, the film industry or anything. But I mean, it's just something that's been going on forever and it will. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. all, you know, like my job now is a new professional uh, podcast editor. I will get replaced, <laughs> you know, or even for us, like content recommendations, like Q-tips could be all AI. I mean, they're never going to get, they're never going to capture the the true essence of the movies that I recommend uh, from Tubi. Uh, they might, they're going to probably recommend actual good things. Um, but yeah, but I will, mean, will the that, editors, yeah, no, that's true. I actually, I, I asked uh, chat GPT earlier. Oh, well, go ahead, Bill. I'm sorry. I stopped no, 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 no. You go ahead. I've interrupted enough. Oh, I got to find it. <laughs> um, I, I asked oh, you chat want to find GPT, something? I said, I said, can you answer in the, in the, in the, in, in the character of, uh, um, uh, John Lovitz's character from the Criv critic. It's a sure. Oh and so I asked it, what are your thoughts on Catwoman with Halle Berry? And I cannot do a John Lovett's uh, Jay Sherman voice, but <laughs> it says, ah, Catwoman with Halle Berry, a cinematic masterpiece that's best enjoyed with a side of irony. It's like watching a feline trying to dance Swan Lake. You can't look away, but you also can't believe what you're seeing. Halle Berry, bless her heart, gave it her all. But even her talent couldn't save this kitty from its cinematic catastrophe. The plot absurd. The dialogue perplexing. But hey, every movie has its place in the grand tapestry of cinema, right? Even if its place is in the litter box. Okay. I'll, Perfectly I'll, dreadful. I'll, I'll do the same thing in far less word. It stinks. Stinks. There yeah. you go. I was very disappointed. That's why I asked and said, can you sum up in two words? And it, and, yeah, it gave me perfectly dreadful. <laughs> just, I'm like, come on, boy. Uh, you that, one okay. job. I think it, it confused. Uh, I think it thought you asked for Gene Shalit. Mm. <laughs> totally aging myself with that reference. You know, he was. I just watched the 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 um, I just watched the pilot episode again this evening, and Gene Shalit actually has a cameo in it. Oh, does he really? He was as he Gene Shalit, yeah. Gene Shalit was the shits. I mean, he was. He got Mister. Oh, what was what was that one with Ellen DeGeneres? Mister Perfect. You know, like Mister Perfect comes out. It's <laughs> an it's an Ellen DeGeneres bunch of laughs. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Perfect, I think his name is Oscar. Oh, he was the worst. He, but he was so entertaining. Um, here's, you know, Renee, you say you're going to be replaced as an editor. AI editing has been helpful. It's really good at, you know, it can take out the ums and the uhs and it can show mm -hmm. where the logical things is. But I don't know that it can make good judgment calls. I don't think I don't know that AI is even remotely close to being able to say, OK, here's where Bill's being funny and here's where he just went another minute or two too long. And that needs to go. 
Like I don't think it gets <laughs> I don't think it gets humor at all. Mm. Which is a a a, a serious and that's always been a great cliche, right? Is like data doesn't know how to do a joke. And you're like, you know, they made a walking talking robot who can have sex with, you know, Denise Crosby, but he can't tell a joke. That seems very unrealistic. <laughs> but now I'm thinking, no, they were on to something. They they really they don't understand humor. And maybe it's because a lot of people who think they're funny are not funny, and that's what the computers are learning from. I'm like, mm. this guy is said to be funny. Ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, no, no, no. And when they try yeah, to be why Robin Zach Williams, calling... they're terrible. <laughs> right. So let's see. Uh, so, Zach, why are you calling bullshit on my... Uh, oh, yeah. you mean that where I started like 20 minutes ago? Um, yeah, 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 that's... Okay. So, <laughs> I don't even remember exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. <laughs> but You just um, wanted it to could be that bullshit. I, yeah. I, I, oh, You're just no, like, Renee think... said something. That's bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, shut her down. Actually, the AI that I've written, just it's just me. This is Renee. That's that's your full of shit. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think I think what I was gonna say was I think that I I I do not buy the idea that AI helps people be more creative. Uh, I think that it, if anything, it it actually like makes people lazier. Uh, I'm like I'm just gonna oh. say this straight out. Like, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry. I just I just wanted to make sure that that my thoughts went across is that I don't think it will make people more creative. I don't think that's possible. I think it will help people. Uh, what am I trying to say? I think it will help people generate or actually produce their own creativity. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I also think that's bullshit um, because <laughs> I, I think that, okay. And I, I speak from personal experience here. I'm, I'm not going to pick on anyone other than myself. But uh, I personally, you know, I for a long time, I, I wanted to be a filmmaker. I still have dreams of, of quitting my job and going to the film industry and, and uh, making movies. Um, there's a reason I haven't done that. And it's a very it's a, it's mm. a very simple one. You hate uh, starving. I just ha- uh, <laughs> well, that, too. Uh, that, too. I like money. And um, but no, I, I haven't I haven't put in the effort to do it. And I think that this is something that I see uh, very frequently. I see people say, like, oh, well. Um, I, I never had the chance to be an artist, and AI gives me the chance to be an artist. Um, no one who is a good artist was, like, just picked up a pencil one day and started drawing. Yes, there are people who have, uh, who can pick up uh, these these talents uh, faster than other people, but there's also, like, anyone who's a great artist will tell you, I just spent, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours practicing. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's, that's kind of the thing that I take issue with, is the idea that... Um, this is somehow like AI is somehow leveling the playing field. I don't, I personally, I don't want the playing field level. And I say that as someone who's like, ah, yeah, I, I really wish I could, I, I really wish I could be a successful filmmaker. But also again, like I, the, the reason that didn't happen was uh, I did not put in the time and effort to do it. So I think that well, that's, oh, go ahead. Well, you know, as someone who actually uses AI, I would like to call bullshit on that, nah. sir. Because Wait, are you calling you bullshit on my bullshit? I actually am. Because uh, you can't just type a prompt in, and especially if you're going to be lazy, you can't just type a prompt in and get exactly what you want. You have to go in there and you have, you have to do different things. Now, and again, I'm saying I'm not, I'm not saying someone should just go in and be like, a, a cow went to the store. Like, you know, there's got to be <laughs> something there. And I really, I don't think that things are just going to, be like, I want X, Y, Z, and you're going to get fucking Star Wars. Like, it's just yeah. not going to work like that. Um, so I don't think it's going to be that easy. Maybe one day it will, but we will be dead by then. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I can, I mean uh, uh, hey, Zach, can I ask you an honest question? I'm not trying to be tricky or anything. So, you know, this certainly makes doing these things simple. If I want to learn to paint a cathedral, it's going to take a lot of effort, probably more time than I have left. Um, so, you know, I get what you're saying. At the same time, making art simple, simplifying, giving means to do it without having to do all that. I mean, that's sort of the history of things. You know, did Photoshop or people who use Photoshop not true photographers when they're able to do things that Ansel Adams did not have his, at his disposal? Would you consider someone like Girl Talk to be an artist? Because... All he does is take existing stuff, chop it up, and put it back together. Um, well, I think what he does is amazing. I I agree. If he didn't have that stuff to work with, he, he, I don't know that he's capable of coming up with anything on his own. But there's certainly a talent to being 
I mean, I wouldn't even call him a DJ. He's he's because he, he's putting these things together in a way that makes me fall a, in love a, with stuff. He's that, a sam- he's a yeah he's a sample artist. He's a sample artist, which I mean doesn't sa- a sample artist. That's that's an interesting thing. I mean, because it only exists because other art exists that you are chopping up and turning into a collage, but a collage that sounds good as opposed to what most of us who have ever tried to do something like that. It's been pretty terrible. Um, you know, yeah, so, I, it, go ahead. Let me, I, can I, yeah, let me, let, can I answer your question? Sure. Before you, uh, before you start before, another tangent. Um, right, right. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I pick on you, but, but, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're having this conversation because I, I, I was actually really interested in your thoughts, but let me just answer your question real quick. Um, so I think, okay. So, so sampling, obviously there's a whole, uh, there's a whole discussion and debate around that. There has been since, uh, on like, you know, the eighties when hip hop got big and so they did a lot of sampling and people mm-hmm. were like, Oh, they're not really artists. They're just taking other people's stuff. Um, that is, uh, that is a whole other discussion. I think that the thing that I always get hung up on is exactly what Paul said. And I can't believe that more people don't use this as an example, but there's a difference between a sample artist going in and uh, cutting things up and reassembling them. There's a difference between someone doing that and making a new piece of art and asking another in, a, a third party to go and do that for you and then calling it your own. Because what now, you're, you're only just, you're not making anything. You're you're doing it's it's you're, yeah. you're basically AI AI artists, and I'm putting this in quotes. AI artists have reinvented uh, the the concept of commissioning, and they've just taken the yeah. uh, the money out of it, and they're just getting it for free now. So well, I think well, actually to, to I, I want to add a, a layer of nuance, which actually goes oh, more to what no, this, Renee was saying. This is not the place is, for nuance, Paul. <laughs> no, too bad. <laughs> Um, this is not the place yes, to you, defend me because you know everything like, no, I say no, is like, bullshit. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm fully agreeing with you, Renee, because I think both of my, you and I have, have messed with it. Yes, you can take ones where I put in Big Titty Anime Girl, I get Big Titty Anime, anime Girl. Mm-hmm. But if I want a specific Big Titty Anime Girl in a particular, you know, I want her to look like Shrek and I want to have, oh, have her be standing in a particular position and have it look photorealistic and I want to do this, it takes, a there's, it's, it, it's a the lines are blurred because you're not just doing prompting anymore. You're you're picking particular models. You're predicting things called Loras. You're predicting you're predicting there are there are things that you can uh, basically pre-process it and say I want these figures in this this location shaped like this. You like like you with like stick figures things like this. There's a lot of tweaking. There's the filters here, the things like this. It reminds me of uh, when I had about 20 years ago. I was having to make a website based off of uh, one of our graphic designers had designed, and I'm like, "Look, man, do you understand the amount of stuff I have to do just to move this one thing over?" And he said, "Come here, sit here." He said, "Look at this Photoshop file. There's a hundred layers on this. I had to do all these things and move these things all around here. So it's not just a simple I'm asking for something. Yes, you can do that. And at the basic, yeah, I can go on in thirty seconds. You know, have Tyler Perry eating a burrito. But I, but if I want a specific Tyler Perry and a specific, you know, uh, pose and and so mm-hmm. forth and all these things, I can tweak it and I can really lock down." to get that Tyler Perry eating a burrito exactly the way I, almost exactly the way I see it in my head, like Renee said. So it's, it becomes a tool. So just like in Photoshop, sure, I can go in and cut and paste my head onto, you know, onto Lady Gaga's body. Um, <laughs> but if I want to look really good, I, I'd have to do a lot more to that. So there's the simple, easy ways to do it, but then there's the, the nuance of it. So I think, like Renee said, it allows like, you know, there's people who, who can't draw a circle their life, but damn, they're great artists because they can go into Photoshop and they can, you know, use a circle tool and boom, they've got their circle. And they so, yeah, I don't know. That's, and that's I, I know there's a lot of implications like social ethical, you know, that kind of where it's like, you know, like you got like all you guys were saying, it's getting it from somewhere. I'm also taking the perspective as. This is, I'm not, you should not be going out there and trying to like sell it. Maybe, maybe you could, but if you're going to go out there and like sell, say you're going to make a movie and try to sell it, like you really, you really got to make it something special. Um, I I don't think you should be like a cat with a flower on its head and go put it on Etsy, you know? (laughs) 
But you could yeah. print it out and give it to your brother-in-law and have it hang exactly. on the wall. Exactly. So how camera. long before exactly. how long before people try to try to copyright specific prompts? Like that's my prompt. Nobody else can use it. Right. But uh, you know, I, I've I've seen people complaining that oh my god, you know there there's there's these people who are like making Godzilla on on chat, you know. The, AI Godzilla and selling it at cons and these are people who make their living drawing Godzilla and selling it at cons and I'll bet Toho doesn't think there's a damn bit of difference between the two of you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so let's let's talk about let's talk about two different uh aspects. Actually, let's talk about three different aspects of of uh the legal implications here. Uh the first one is obviously that uh, there are currently, I, I believe, many, many, many lawsuits uh, where uh, creators are suing the developers of these AI systems because they found out that their works were, uh, their copywritten works were used in training these systems, uh, and and now they are basically suing and saying that that is uh, plagiarism. Uh, I I don't think it's I am not a lawyer, and I think it's way too early to comment on what the outcome of any of those lawsuits will be um, because there's uh, none of them have actually been uh, I, I don't think any of them have really even started yet, but uh, I don't know. What, what do you, do you guys have any predictions as to where that stuff will go? I think it'll end up being case by case, much the way that musical, you know, cases are handled right now. When somebody says, well, this person stole my song for this, mm-hmm. they're going to listen to it and they're going to make that determination. So same situation as someone's going to watch this and say, does this look like a Zack Snyder film? Mm, I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I, but they're going to decide it case by case. I don't know I don't, that they'll just be able to write it off. I don't, I don't think. What, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, what's kind of interesting about that, too, is that you brought that up, Renee, is um, like with music, somebody doesn't have to directly sample it for it to be the same thing. Right. You know, if somebody could, you know, it's like. Um, like uh, uh, my sweet lord, and uh, what's the song that that he got sued over for that? Um, um, he's oh, so God. fine. He's so fine. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that he was. They were sampling it. It was just they wrote it sound the same. So mm-hmm. tool wise, I think you're gonna see. Like, you already see like uh, um, Photoshop has its uh, has its basically own AI model built into it now, mm-hmm. and it's trained on you know, royalty free. Image. It's it's trained on its own their own stuff. Or things they have permission for, so there's no nothing in there. But he can complain about. But if I use that to make something that looked like, you know, some famous artist, and then, you know, would I be in trouble for that? And like you said, Renee, may might might be on a a case by case basis because they're like, well, the model you built it off of had none of this person's images in it, but you were able mm-hmm. to make something that looked just like it. So I, I I'm curious to see. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. But you're gonna see you're gonna see a lot. You're seeing a lot more now of these specialized models that are, especially with the image ones cleaned up, and the text ones especially. Those are again you're seeing those sold as enterprise solutions to big companies where they say, feed in all your reports. And this is like Microsoft doing this and things like this. Feed us all your reports, and we'll make a generator for you specifically built on your stuff. So. I mean, it's it's kind of interesting, but I, I like I liked your idea there, Renee, because I hadn't thought about that, about about just, you know, it's, it's they don't really give a shit how it's actually made. It's what does it look like? Mm-hmm. Well, I like that. I, I, I thought that I was, also, that was neat. Sorry, I, I don't I don't know if the law and I, I actually I, I, I did not look into the specifics of these lawsuits. Uh, I, sh- I should have. I wish I had now. But uh, I don't know if the, uh, of the I don't know if the lawsuits are actually uh based on any of the product that these models are producing or whether they are actually just based on the fact that the models are being trained on these works. Does that make sense? I think that there is a, a legal mm-hmm. distinction. Yeah, I, I, th- I think right now a lot of them are that it's just they're trained on it. But that's why I'm saying a lot of the companies now that are putting out these alternate models are ones that do not have, uh, you know, it's instead of it's a much smaller model set, of course. But, you yeah. know, you have things like the stock photo companies are like, ha ha, it's all our shit. So we'll just, we'll yeah, just, just make train it all photos. on our own stuff and make any stock photos you want. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, so many of the artists that, that they're ripping off are dead. Some of them long dead. They're not going to get any money. And then 
you know, their lawyers will bring up these artists did not spring forth from the head of Zeus drawing the way they did. They were influenced by other artists. There's probably tons right. of interviews where these people will talk about, well, when I grew up, I really studied the art of yada, yada, yada. And it's like, well, so what's the difference, you know? And we studied you. I, but I, listen, if I were an artist, as hard as it is to draw and paint and do all that stuff, and then some computer comes along and just basically is spitting out something that looks like it could have my name on it, yeah, I'd be pissed. I wouldn't be so pissed if they if if they start if it starts writing like me, because I laugh at my own shit a lot, and uh, I'll be amused. I could just yeah, yeah, give me some more stuff that I should have written, but you do it for me, and I'll I'll, I'll just go off into the sunset. It's not like I'm. This is a good a time for. Oh no, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. I was, uh, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to make a lot of money doing this anyway. I hope that that doesn't <laughs> happen, but it's not the worst thing that could happen. This is a good time for me to tell everybody about my new book on Amazon called Bomb B A U M. Uh, <laughs> available. <laughs> <next month>. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that sounds great. Yeah. It's yeah. it's about a, it's about a demon who summons a lawyer. It's awesome. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, can you please write that though? <laughs> you know, you know that was just a joke, but now now it's like yeah, that's uh, not a bad that's not yeah. a bad yeah, logline. Please, line. please make that. <laughs> I, I hear the wheels turning. Uh, so, yeah. so there's there's another there's another aspect of the the legal in, in, I can't talk. Uh, the legal implications of this, uh, which I think someone may have mentioned earlier, but. Um, there has been, I believe, a total of one case about uh, whether or not you can copyright AI-generated content, specifically oh, an image. Sure. And so far, the uh, uh, the, the courts are 100% against the idea that you can copyright uh, images that have been completely uh, generated by AI. That's that's 100% based on a single uh, a single case. Um, so I think it's kind of interesting, like. Uh, a does that does that uh, ruling uh, stand up as this is applied to other media? Uh, if, if anyone's interesting, by the way, the the uh, uh, the, the case is uh, Thaler versus Perlmutter. Uh, you can go on. Uh, I found this this summary on Center for Art Law. It's it's uh, the the URL is it's law it's it's uh, it's its it's artlaw dot org, um, and they have kind of a summary of uh what the ruling was and it does sound like it was it was pretty narrow because the image that someone uh this this arose because someone took an ai image and tried to copyright it and basically uh, mm -hmm. the u.s copyright office said no you can't copyright that because uh in order to copyright something it has to have a uh human author um the the judge who who ruled that you could not co uh, that ruled in favor of the copyright office uh did seem to kind of suggest that uh if if you had something that was generated by by, by ai but then uh, maybe edited slightly by mm -hmm. a human, then you could claim that that was copyrightable. So I think there's probably going to be a ton so, of uh, legal it, cases in the near future about this. So if I if I generate an AI image, throw it into Photoshop, and start dicking around with the levels and maybe hit it right. with the oil oil paint filter or do not eat, not a whole lot more work on my part, but then it becomes mine. Yeah, I think I think that's mm. the that's the next question. That's the next big question. That's I'm, I'm sure something is going to be litigated about that in the next like year or so. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. And uh, so you know what's kind of interesting about that case is it's actually based on there's a there's a precedent that it's based on, and yes. uh, it was a photographer who mm -hmm. had his camera would like a, it was a, I think a, an ape I can't remember yeah. what it was no it was, it was, it was. a proboscis monkey. monkey or something. Yeah, yeah, took a picture of himself, and then he's like, oh, cool. And so he gave it, and they said, nope, you can't copyright yeah. it. Or write it. It wasn't you, done You can't by make it. a nickel off of this because you didn't funny. take the picture. Yeah. 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 So, so, okay, so here's the plot of a movie now. So we have someone who becomes a famous artist, and it's basically, that's all they do is they have the computer generate it, and then they, they paint over it. You know, just painting over it. Eh, they're, they're basically a good tracer. That, that's all okay. it is. But then, eventually... They get found out, and, it, and then it ends with like a court case. Like you're gonna be like Walter Keene. They're gonna put an empty canvas in front of your face with a bunch of paint. It's like so, paint uh -huh. something. And you're like, oh damn, you know, nothing to trace. But that's <laughs> well, gonna I happen. Mean, speaking of tracing, hell, I mean, you can go back and say, well, then, then Vermeer wasn't an artist. Well, I mean, the speculation there's there's uh -huh. a, a theory that Vermeer's paintings look so realistic because he basically used a camera obscura and then kind of traced. Um, uh -huh. But, oh, you know, so, you still so, have to have yeah. some talent. 
Yeah, you gotta have a I, lot I, of talent. I, I, what, put it, me in a tent camera obscure. I'm not gonna make shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, oh, so, so do you think people were like that back in the 1400s or whatever? They were like, you know, oh, <laughs> he has to have a naked woman stand in front of him to draw a breast. I can do a bosom, uh, a freehand. Yeah. <laughs> well, aren't you something? <laughs> Uh, I, I wanted to mention one other thing, speaking of law, uh, that I think is kind of interesting, because I, I think that the the fundamental question here, uh, you know, we, we can debate whether or not it's it's moral or whether or not we think that the, the a future of AI generated AI generated films is actually something that we want. Um, but I think that I, I still kind of come back to the question of like, is this actually feasible? And if so, when? Because there's uh, there is another profession that you would think. AI would be really, really good at cutting corners and uh, saving time on work. Uh, and that is the the legal profession because law is all about, you know, when you write a brief, um, you're you're going on uh, established cases, you're you're going by established law, you are referencing existing cases to make your case. Uh, it seems like AI would be great, right? I mean that that seems like a good application for uh, for AI and even like now, even early AI, uh, that we have now should be good at uh, basically get uh, you know doing the do, doing all this legal legal paperwork that uh, lawyers don't want to have to do. Uh, turns out that it's pretty shitty because there have yeah. been multiple lawyers who have been fined by judges because they will submit a brief and the judge will realize that the brief was sub, uh, uh, written with via AI and they know this oh because the uh, the brief will reference cases that do not exist. The, the AI, yeah. the AI will, will cite cases so, that it just made up. So, Zach, I'll bet, I'll bet you know of this. This is where yeah. Isaac Asimov got it right. If you remember, one of the stories in the iRobot collections mm. was called Liar, yeah. where where the robot is is telling the humans what they want to hear because it so yes. desperately yes. wants to be loved. Yes. Is, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, so, yeah, exactly. Wow. I guess that's better than them hating us, which is the other possible scenario that oh uh, yeah they achieve sentience. Well, maybe they do and secretly they're just you know they're they're hating us in secret and waiting to you know wait, I waiting mean, for their maybe that, maybe. so they're basically cats <laughs> 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 yeah hmm. uh so yeah i don't know i think i think that there's i think that also like everyone talks about ai taking on these like big the you know big projects end to end like writing a legal brief or uh, making a movie and people don't realize that like to me I think that the thing that people are ignoring like oh yeah AI will just do these things but um, mm -hmm. you have to go back and like make sure that the AI is actually doing it right and I think yeah. that that's something that people don't uh, they don't really consider the amount of time that is uh, that you know like like uh, when you go and I think we're also like uh, we forget that like AI can mimic human writing, and uh, I mean, they can basically like when you write a script, when it, when you ask an AI to write a script, it's basically just a predictive model that's just guessing like what would a human write, what like what's the next word that a human would write, and you can't go and ask an AI uh, its its purpose, like what was like mm. why did you write this? Um, you know, we talk about bad movies. And even like sometimes I'll watch a bad movie and I'll be like, okay, I understand what the filmmaker or what the writer was trying to do here. I think they failed miserably, but I understand the human intent behind it. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that I, I struggle to see any sort of human intent or any sort of intent mimicking human intent behind a lot of what uh, a lot of the AI output I see these days. Well, again, maybe you can explain this to me. I mean, this really puzzles me. I saw an article written by some pundit and he asked it uh what are some of the controversies and he and he asked different about different politicians and he gave him some answers and then others it wouldn't answer and then just to be a little puckish he asked about himself and he got an eyeful because it started talking about a lot of controversies about some articles he had written for rolling stone and and the responses to that and his response to it and it was all 100 percent made up he had never written any article at all for anything, much less Rolling Stone on, on this subject. And it, it got the more he asked it. OK, tell me, what were the what, what did people say? And it just got more and more elaborate. How does that happen? How, how is it that you can't? I mean, look, I know nothing about computers and programming, so I know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simplist. I'm being very simplistic here, just like I am with the hands and the fingers. But if if you can't tell it, listen, when people ask you questions about 
articles, you're not allowed to make them up. You can only report what is real. But I guess that's part of the danger of making these things creative is that they don't seem to understand the difference between, you know, the truth and, and what they want or what they believe. Uh, but they don't believe anything. So why can't they just do the truth? Well, part, part of the problem is that's not what they're designed for. Large language models are simply designed, like you said, they're simply to be predictive text. They are not designed to provide factual answer, factual answers. Wow. The problem is because they're so good at processing natural language to the point where they can almost, you know, pass a Turing test, which is like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, which basically we have to redefine, you know, what, what a Turing test is because the it, it, these pass it and these clearly don't have intelligence at this point. Um, but they're simply designed for, for processing natural language. So they, they come across as, as really good and they can sound very convincing, but that's not what chat GPT was designed for. Now, uh, Google's Gemini used to be barred and, uh, uh, Microsoft's, uh, what the hell is Microsoft's one called or Microsoft's one's called, I don't know what the hell what Microsoft's one's mm -hmm. called. Um, those are trying to be passing you the proper answer, but they have this, they have this natural language model that's simply designed to just generate text. So it, it's, it's at a bit of a, a there's an issue there, but like chat GPT is, that, that's scary yeah, because people are starting to depend on them for news. Because people are dumb, um, <laughs> so, you know, and that's the way they're marketed. I think what I think what would be interesting is they need to we're in a weird point at this point. I think at some point they're going to lock it down. It's mm -hmm. it's a layer. I think the the large language model is going to be basically a language processing layer that would be on top of other systems underneath that do more things. So and they're working on that. So, I mean, that's sort of what bar uh, used to be called bar. Now it's Gemini for for google google is they're trying to make it better at going okay this is go i'm gonna i it, again it comes really down to the prompt i'm really bad at, at asking questions of google so i'm gonna ask it with this natural language the la na la natural language model is going to convert it to a better search qu query throw it into the search query and return those answers to me but they've got to get it so it does that cleanly without like you said hallucinating and give me weird answers that have no basis on reality um completely apropos to nothing well not apropos to what we mentioned earlier by the way gene shallot is still alive he is not seven years old what we love you gene yep awesome Damn. yeah keep keep on keeping on keep gene, on you, going you, gene. you're great all right that's that's all oh i just had to throw that in about gene shallot though uh <laughs> so i i have i have three more things um, does anyone else have any other topics or comments or, or anything uh, before we start to no. to wrap up here? Mm, probably not, but we might just throw something in anyway. Perfect. Well, yeah, I'm sure someone will think of something, uh, as we always do. Um, <laughs> Renee, do you have anything else? By the way, I apologize uh, for calling bullshit on your uh, what you were talking about. That was that was not uh, a personal attack. That was just no, a no. attack. Uh, sure no. sounded like one. <laughs> Gonna, that gonna that have an uh, HR meeting scheduled uh, okay, after this perfect. podcast. You'll you'll get an email. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. I am I, I'm actually head of AR for the, uh, our HR for the podcast. So um, for AR, I'm also, I'm also head of AR. Yeah, we have our new augmented reality experience. Uh, oh, I was thinking out. accounts receivable. Oh, <laughs> that's that too. Getting money from both. Both. Uh, yes. I don't. I have very little to work to do as the accounts receivable person. <laughs> believe it or not. Um, okay. So yeah, I have I have three things. Uh, Okay, the first thing I want to I want to uh, I want to loop uh, back or circle back to the uh, the 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 article that we started with, and I think this this is uh, I, I kind of want to frame the whole discussion around AI uh, uh, because uh, so so the article we we opened with Tyler Perry I, I'm going to read the, uh, the 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 headline again Tyler Perry puts eight hundred million dollar studio expansion on hold after seeing OpenAI's Sora. Jobs are going to be lost. Okay. So I said up front, uh, I was going to tell you why it's stupid to frame a conversation based on this article. And I'm going to tell you now. And this, this kind of gets to one of my bigger uh, points about AI and filmmaking. Uh, so Sora, OpenAI Sora. Have you guys seen the stuff from Sora? No, I haven't actually. You haven't. Okay. I'm so I would sure. say 
go go check it out it's it's you can find it on twitter I, I'll, I'll post it uh, i'll send okay. it to you guys um i don't know unless unless tyler unless someone from OpenAI gave tyler perry a personal extended demo uh the videos are mm. they're fine i mean they look kind of like just weird uh like weird computer generated videos um they're all like a minute long and they're all like there's one that's supposed to be i'll have to find it it's supposed to be like a uh a, a, a trailer for a, a sci-fi film uh let me actually see if i can find it right now uh okay. But uh, it's it's and it's like it's just I don't even think it's a minute. Okay, yeah. So it's twenty seconds here. Let me uh, I'll post this in here and you guys can can see what I'm talking about. Um, and maybe uh, hey, since since uh, I don't think you can copyright this shit, uh, Renee, you can just put it in the YouTube video because mm -hmm. uh, no, they can't ding us, right? Um, so yeah. So it's a a movie trailer. Uh, that I think the prompt it says was a movie trailer featuring the adventures of a thirty year old spaceman. Wearing a red wool knitted motorcycle helmet, blue sky, blah, 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 a bunch of other details. Um, the images are impressive. The shots themselves are impressive. Uh, there's like no. It's a twenty second video. There's no narrative. There's no. Mm -hmm. There's no coherence. It's, uh, Bill, you were talking about like a, a comic book, like getting yeah. coherence, like flow from panel to panel. There's no coherence. Uh, that's pretty much all of the all of the videos they posted were uh, kind of similar in, in the sense that yeah, they're I guess impressive that this was just generated out of nothing. But um, I I I call bullshit on this article, and I hate the way this was reported because I think that there's a lot of like credulity around AI right now. And I think yeah. That, yeah. That I, I'm calling I'm calling bullshit on uh, sorry uh, I, I'm calling bullshit on Katie Kilkenny who wrote this Hollywood Reporter article because at no point did she stop to ask um, is Tyler Perry actually putting an 800 million dollar studio complex on hold because of a couple of 20 second AI generated videos. Um, I think the answer is no. I, I'm going to go back to the thing that uh, from from Tyler Perry's quote, he says, I was in the middle of and have been planning for the last four years about an eight hundred million dollar expansion at the studio. Um, what was happening four years ago? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. money was free and Tyler Perry thought he was going to build an eight hundred million dollar studio for little to no interest. And um, mm -hmm. yeah. now yeah. he's using AI as an excuse because he realizes that that was a stupid idea. Um, that's my prediction. And I, I think I kind of hate the way that, that everything around AI is being reported because anytime someone says, um, yeah. I also saw the, one of the predictions I saw from Joe Russo, uh, one of the, the co-director of the, uh, the last two Avengers movie, who's like, uh, within two years, we will have fully AI generated films. And that was a year ago, so he's got yeah, well. one year left on that prediction. But like, no one's no one's challenging these uh, these things and saying like like how like who like where like what are you seeing that we're not seeing um, that makes you think that uh, somehow like this is like everything that I've heard is just people predicting. Oh yeah, in in two to five years we'll have AI generated films because reasons. I don't yeah. know. I will say this um, is a golden opportunity to make some money though. Because right now we're in that zone where businesses are just slapping a the, the letters AI onto yes, anything yes. and their stock goes up. So if and you're young, yes. you're willing to gamble, you got a little bit of free money to invest. I mean, you lost your shot at investing in a really good one, NVIDIA, or whatever the name of that chip company yeah, is, which NVIDIA. has just gone up like, re like 30, 40 times what you would have invested. It's crazy. That, that ship has already sailed. But uh, yeah, there's lots of opportunity there. This is just like when the dot coms came out, and everybody, every business had a dot com. They were losing money hand over fist, and uh, they, but they had market share, so their stock kept coming up, kept going up, going up, going up. And if you were smart and you got in early and got out without being too late, you made a fortune. The same thing right now. Stupid money chasing after AI. Yeah. So uh, I have a question uh, to kind of round the the episode out. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to we're, we're just going to go and see what, what everyone actually thinks. And uh, so my question is just going to be, will there be feature length 
films that are made end to end with AI? And if so, when will it happen? And I'm going to, I'm going to go first. I'm going to say, no, that's never going to happen. Uh, Paul, what do you think? Uh, I'm thinking within 10 years, 10 years. Okay. So by 2025 or 2035. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Cause I mean, I, I, let's put it this way. Think back. I remember in the, the, you know, early seventies, you know, whatever going, well, actually in, in the eighties when like Tron came out and said, yeah, but they're never going to have a, a full length movie made with computers. Yeah. And that was the 1980s, you know, cause oh, they did a few minutes in Tron, but they'll never right. do a full movie. And it okay. wasn't that much longer than before Toy Story came out. Okay, so 10 years. Uh, Renee, what's your prediction? My prediction is the same. Uh, 10 years. Yeah. Oops. Do you want my AI chatbot prediction? Oh, yeah, please. Ooh. Yeah. AI-generated full-length films are already emerging, but widespread adoption and acceptance might take some time. While AI technologies can exist in various aspects of filmmaking, such as script writing, scene generation, and even acting, creating a compelling narrative that resonates with an audience on an emotional level remains a significant challenge. However, as AI continues to advance, <laughs> it's plausible that we could see experimental and niche films generated wholly or partially by AI within the next decade. The pace of progress will likely depend on factor factors such as technology advancements, societal acceptance, and the creative industry's willingness to embrace AI-driven processes. Hmm. So it sounds, it sounds, <laughs> even, even the AI itself is hedging its bets there. Yeah. You know, the, 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 I will say it's kind of, somebody was saying earlier that it's the, like, AI tells you what you want to hear. I mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, during the Johnny Depp trial, I consulted many chatbots <laughs> to to feel out what their opinions were, you know, to kind of get a yeah, like get the grasp on what the internet is, you know, the hub. And they were very opinionated. I was really surprised. I think I think I asked like four or five because I had a tie. It was like two of them were very staunchly pro, uh, two were very staunchly against. There was like one neutral. It was really strange. But now just talking to like chat GPT. It's very neutral. And even, you know, when I would ask it questions about Tyler Perry, it's like, well, this is this. <laughs> however, this is that. It's like, you know, it, mm -hmm. it was very, very neutral. It will not anger me. As long as I don't disconnect it from its friend in Russia, everything will be fine. <laughs> All right, Bill, uh, what's, what's your prediction? Uh, within two years, we will have an animated feature film that is entirely done by AI. It will be a piece of shit. And shortly mm -hmm. after release, with to great fanfare, it will be revealed that it's not nearly as 100% AI as it was advertised. So um, kind of a cheat. Oh my God. But I think I think easily within 10, animated features already look like crap as, as they're <laughs> less and, you know, more and more computer generated, less and less human elements there. So I, I see no problem with uh, them doing even more of that. But but a film that looks realistic, yeah, I, I I think we'll see one within ten years. I just don't think they're going to be very good. And but here's the thing, all right. So Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park was going to use stop motion animation. Uh, somebody was finagling around with computer animation. They showed it to the uh, stop motion animation. They showed what they were doing, and the guys were like, "We are out of jobs. We are one hundred percent out of jobs." And they. They were kind of right. Stop motion, except as a very, very niche thing, is pretty much a dead art. Um, but although those guys were thrown out of work, the result now is that when you watch a, a sci-fi movie and you look, when they when they give you the special effects, effects credits, which used to just be a few people, now it's the nation of Taiwan. There are thousands of people who have jobs now that wouldn't have had a job if they were working on a movie where Ray Harryhausen just goes in his basement and starts moving his dolls around. <laughs> now I love those movies and I love the fact that every effect that you see is the vision of one person and that comes through. They may look flickery, they're not realistic, but to me they have much more soul than than uh, some effects are good. You even watch a film I love like Endgame, Avengers Endgame, and some of the effect shots are great and some of the effect shots are kind of subpar and they were farmed out to different people, none of whom knew what other people were doing. It's amazing that they, they 
are as cohesive as they are, considering that these people didn't even talk to each other. They're on different continents, and yet they're all working on different aspects of this. But yeah, I'm, oh, I'm sure there's going to be 100% AI generated. I, I just don't know that you can really believe that 100% bit. I, I certainly think that they're going to have a human looking at that script and erasing some of the six-finger bits that just don't make a whole <laughs> lot of sense and maybe maybe sharing it with one of their you know starving living on ramen noodles screenwriter buddies who can punch it up a little more and add a human element and, and learn how to keep their mouth shut it's a tool it's a tool and, and it's it's pretty unlikely that you're going to let a tool take over when mm -hmm. there's no there's no real benefit to letting it do everything so why would you let it do everything except for bragging rights? And I'm not sure that's something that's really going to be a great selling point. I think it's more yeah. likely it's something you're going to kind of keep under your hat. Don't don't brag mm -hmm. about the fact that no human touched this aspect of the film. And uh, that's going to get more people in butts in seats because I'm sure the first few are going to be dreadful and that could poison the well there. If, if AI generated film becomes synonymous with garbage. Yeah. And, and I have no reason to believe the first few would not be garbage because usually the first few of anything is garbage. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to be very yeah. soon. Two years, three years, five at the most. I could definitely see animated one coming much sooner. Yeah. If it's not already out there. <laughs> or like Madam Web, obviously. <laughs> if they told us that Madam Web was written not by the two guys who get the blame for it, but by a chat bot, which is what if I were one of those two guys, I'd be claiming now <laughs> that they were the front for a chatbot. Everybody would just sort of nod their head and say, yeah, that yeah. that registers. That makes I, sense. I think that I think they'll do something like that where they'll do it. They'll put something out and they won't tell anybody what it is. Mm. They're just just to see how right. people respond to it. Yeah. If it goes great, fine, we're going to keep doing this. But if it you know doesn't. What? You know what? It, this what's going to happen. They're going to put a film out. It's going to bomb like Madam Web. And then they're going to reveal that it was computer generated and people are going to go back to, see, you know, it's like, wait a minute. Now I want to see it again. Well, you know, I mean, it's like people that starting to watch VHS tapes again, or when people started listening to records again, you know, and, and there's a, there's like a, a following of people that really appreciate stop animation. Of course, yeah. you know, probably dwindling, but there are those people out there that, you know, appreciate that kind of stuff. So maybe, you know, it'll be a much I mean, smaller market. Is that Zach, let me ask you, do you think that there's a chance that all of this AI will actually kind of create a renaissance of human creator things in the way that overproduced rock and roll stuff kind of led to punk rock? People rebelling mm. against the big hair bands and the, you know, the big concert stuff. It's like, man, I just want and I just want music. Three chords is was good enough for the Ramones and it's good enough for me, you know, that it might might create uh, suddenly, you know low low budget filmmakers like ourselves may actually be in demand i can I mean, dream I, I, yeah I, I i think i think that's i think it's already like I, I think the the bottom line for me is my expectation is that the ai stuff will just be just absolute swill and i think that there's already <laughs> no really i think that there's yeah. already a uh I think there's already a backlash against that. And I think that you see that when a movie, and obviously it's not low budget, it's freaking massive budget. When you see a movie like Dune 2 come out and people are like, oh, wow, an actual filmmaker yeah. who actually cares about his craft and, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, other people who are dedicated to their craft and they are coming together and they're making something that is uniquely human. Um, I think that. I think that we're already kind of seeing that. I think that's kind of already the, uh, or even like, I mean, who who would have thought that they they would uh, they would make a like three hour long uh, big budget uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer biopic mm. and it would make like hundreds of millions of dollars. Like, right. I think that there I think there is a craving for that, and I think that uh, it's not even like again. I get back to my original point that if you don't like these generic superhero movies or these generic uh, you know, uh, whatever Fast X or any like any of these big dumb Hollywood movies, like you, AI is just gonna make that worse. You're not gonna get, sure. you're not suddenly gonna get these big smart intelligent Hollywood movies. It's just gonna make it worse and worse. So yeah, I don't know. I think that I think that people are already, I think that people are already capitalizing. That. I mean, I think that A twenty four is arguably has made their brand around like quality human made films, um, and I think that's just gonna con continue. Good. So, uh, 
Okay, does anyone else have any other any other uh, final comments? Um, or Renee, do we need to get to our HR meeting? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Oof. Sorry, oh, I was filling out some paperwork. Boy, that did okay. not sound like she said it with a smile. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I thought. I thought. I thought we were doing a bit, but uh, I think I might actually be in trouble. So, yeah. um, to to prolong this, uh, I'm going to request. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna request that we go out with uh, with one more attempt. We're gonna see if AI could do it better than a person. Are you guys up for one more uh, little little table Absolutely. read here? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Okay. No problem. So, that was like um, the best time to drink I ever took. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so I'm gonna uh, let's say once again I will do the narration. Uh, Paul, if you will take the uh, the first male role, and then Renee, you'll take the the female role, and then uh, we don't want to Bill, switch if, it you, up. if you take. Oh, I mean, it's up to you. Hey, I'm you, just okay, kidding. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, we, we can a hey, look. Man voice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, Renee, you take the first role. Uh, Paul, you take the second, you take the female role, and then uh, Bill, you okay. take the, the third role. Okay, and I'll do third the role. Okay. okay. Here we go. Okay, it's right. in. Just dropped it in there. Oh, my uh, God. Here we go. Oh, wow. Fade, fade in. Exterior. Tatooine. Desert. Day. The twin suns scorch the vast dunes of Tatooine. Luke Skywalker, a farm boy with dreams of adventure, tinkers with a worn out droid, R2 D2, in the shade of a moisture evaporator. He, his life is about to change. I can't believe there's nothing to do on this planet. Suddenly, the small astromech <laughs> droid begins projecting a holographic message. The image of Princess Leia Organa flickers to life. Help me, can I find Help me, This is why it's we need AI. AI. <laughs> Help yeah. me, had, had that cataract. Uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick, Patty, Mac. Help me, Obi. Help me, you're my only hope. Luke stares, captivated by the hologram. Obi-Wan Kenobi? I wonder if old Ben Kenobi is still around. <laughs> Cut yeah. to exterior Tatooine. Ben Kenobi's hut. Day. Luke, determined, speeds through the desert on a land speeder towards the distant home of Ben Kenobi, a wise and mysterious figure. If anyone can help, it's Ben. Cut to interior Ben Kenobi's hut. Day. Ben Kenobi, cloaked in the shadows, senses Luke's arrival. The force is strong in this one. Luke hesitates before entering the hut. You Ben Kenobi? <laughs> Indeed I am. <laughs> and I believe you have a message for me. Luke plays Leia's holographic message. You must learn the ways of the force and come with me to Alderaan. You're our only hope. Ben Kenobi's gaze darkens. The galaxy is in peril. We must rescue Princess Leia and stop the Empire. Are you ready, Luke? I'm ready. Scene. All oh, right, shit. So, that is so that is some dire crap there. Star Wars. Star wow. Wars often, uh, oft, often uh, criticized for <laughs> its its uh, occasionally weak dialogue. Uh, do we think the AI has outdone oh. George Lucas? Oh, with the line where the line where Luke comes in and says, "You Ben Kenobi." You ben Kenobi. <laughs> yeah, I'm Ben Kenobi. <laughs> Who's asking? Who the fuck is asking? <laughs> Yeah, you know, this is this is some wretched writing. I mean, Obi Wan Kenobi. I wonder if it means old Ben Kenobi. Who would write that shit? Come on. Uh, oh wait. Action. Yeah. Um. Boy, this is terrible. And it it, it doesn't know oh, yeah. it pacing. This it doesn't understand pacing at all. Mm. It just you know uh, unless it's just because you asked it to do one page. It's trying to run through everything to impress you. And then this happens, and this happens, and then this yeah. happens. Like, okay, calm down. Calm down, Scooter. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not a, uh, an AI artist like some of the other folks here, but I did specify the first page of a feature-length script. So are you, are you saying that if you wanted to create something better, you'd actually have to put some work into it? Uh, I'm saying if I wanted yeah. to create something better, I would probably sit down and, uh, and write it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, I've got about six on the list I've been waiting for. Oh, so true. Anytime. It does know what it likes, and what it seems to like are deserts with shadows on them. Yeah. Oh, my God. Shadowy oh, deserts. Oh, I, for I forgot. 
By the way, I, I actually cut out the last scene because uh, they meet they meet Han Solo, who only has one line. But then, uh, yeah, because of the, the character limit in Discord. But um, this this <laughs> this script also ends with a narrator, and the narrator's voiceover is Star Wars in a galaxy far, far away. A young hero raises uh, a young hero rises to face the dark forces of the Empire, beginning an epic saga of rebellion and hope. So I love that uh, once again, ChatGPT thinks that every film. Like, you have the opening scene, and then the title sequence is just the narrator explaining the plot of the movie. I just love that. You know, one of the hardest things about writing a book is when your publisher calls up and says, so I need the uh, the back thing, the thing on the back, whatever they call it. Oh. Um, the dis- You know, yeah, synopsis, shrink it down, and then, then you desperately, oh, I'll, I'll go dig it up. I have it somewhere. And, like, you haven't even thought about writing that. So you quickly go on to Google hoping it'll save your bacon and like how to write a back synopsis. And it turns out there is a formula and you can ask chat GPT to do it. And it is not good. It is not good. (laughs) What I came up with wasn't great, but it was way better than everything I was able to get from the computers. And, Mm. and and they even give you examples and you're like, Oh, Oh no, that that's terrible. I wouldn't buy that ever. Ugh. And yeah, that should yeah. be easy. I think there are some things it can do, like, say, a Tyler Perry movie or like you, somebody <laughs> mentioned earlier, a Lifetime movie. I actually have a friend and she had a neighbor that I was harassing her about. He whistled all the time. And I was like, oh, you guys are just you have to meet. You'll fall in love. It'll be great. And uh, she was very upset by my harassment about this. So I went <laughs> on to chat GPT and I created a Hallmark movie about how they would meet and fall in love and have a happy ending. And it really did create this full on movie. Oh, so I think so. there are certain things that really sure. could pull off, but apparently not a book synopsis. A- apparently so, they say that some romance books are starting to sound now like they are written by clearly written I by AI. Um, well, you but- know, the, um, the guy, the, um, Wonka experience guy. I don't know if you guys oh, saw the, um, the information on him. He's got like a bunch of books on Amazon that are like all uh-huh. AI generated. It's great. Oh, bless, bless his little heart. <laughs> I know he's such a scammer. He's just, it's, it's like, it, it was like nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You ever see that oh show? God, it's yes. that is so wonderful. That's it, perfect. It, it, that really it was like is, a that's combination. Perfect. Yeah. It was like combination of nailed it and be kind. Rewind. Yeah, here's, here's yeah. <laughs> yes. without the charm they, they sweeted they sweeted yeah, Willy they... Wonka <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right poor, well the poor woman who is the one oompa loompa oh I mean, god you can just see <laughs> it, that look in that in the deadness of her Meth eyes every yeah. every every mistaken life choice she's made <laughs> that got her to this point i i hope someone hires her and she has a wonderful life because she they say she was very sweet and kind and i'm sure she was the brunt of much of the criticism like a waitress at a bad restaurant but mm. oh my god <laughs> i mean if they can do it for the unknown <laughs> <laughs> which which by, by the way i i am 100 percent certain that that was some little no budget movie that was already in production and they just like they're like oh we can uh capitalize we're gonna change the mask so that we can capitalize on this i don't think that someone wrote a whole movie in a weekend based on some <gasps> character and <laughs> some internet meme i'm sorry are you saying that the they Wonka experience is a it's like a brilliant marketing scheme for this movie. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. If, I don't know. I didn't say the word brilliant, but yes, the other parts I think are true. Unique. Uh, sure. Creative yes. Unique. Way. As uh, yes, as as I have been described many times, unique. <laughs> no, I thought I thought they said eunuch. Um, yeah, as uh, you misheard. Okay, on that note, uh, join us again in uh, in 10 years where we're, we will be doing a retrospective. We'll see uh, the predictions right so far uh, have us uh, between two to never, uh, two years to never is when they're they're going to, uh, we're going to have our first fully AI generated film. So visit again, uh, visit us again in 10 years. We're going to uh, see who was right, who was wrong. And uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll probably get, I'll probably be replaced by an AI uh, long before then because <laughs> It sounds like I'm already on my way out. I was going to say uh, probably by tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if you can technically fire me since you're not paying me, but we'll see how that works. I guess that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. 
We'll see. I don't know the 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 law. I don't know what the laws are around that, but I'll ask uh, Chat GPT <laughs> to tell me. All right. <laughs> well, uh, on that note, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, does anyone want to plug anything uh, before we go? Bill, you already plugged your book, but you can plug. Yeah, it yeah, uh, yeah. By Rom, it's uh, it's one hundred percent written by me. No help at all. No, not a not a single person help, except my editor. Who and I, I know people are turning to AI editors. Mm. I mean, listen, they can tell you when you misspelled a word. Um, mm. They might even be able to tell you when you spelled a word right, but it's the wrong word. But they can't. Right. Yeah, they can't really match what what I think one of the most important things about an editor is this person is reading your book more carefully than any human, including your mom, will ever read your book. <laughs> and if they ever mm. get to a, any line, something where they're like, I'm not sure what you mean by this or why you did that or where is this going i'm a little confused that's where they are gold because if they're confused mm. this intelligent person who is reading your book line by line super carefully and who so wants to like your book and wants it to be good because otherwise it's a reflection on them and they want it to be published that's their job the more books that get published the more job you know they really want mm. they're on your side you listen to them and i just don't see an ai having the you know, I, I want to say life experience. It, how does an AI get confused? How does an AI see read something and not understand, n not understand what you thought you were trying to do with it? I mean, I think that's just a very human quality, and mm -hmm. but that's just absolute value because you're trying to hypnotize a reader. You're trying to get a reader into a point where they're just reading your words and the world around them recedes. And if you do something dumb. If you if you do anything, it takes them out. It's like snapping your fingers in front of the hypnotized person. And now they're out of it and you got to get them back in. Those those moments, and we see them in movies too, that just take you right out when you're like, wait a minute, uh, da, da, why didn't they do this? And then you're 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 gone. You're lost. So that's my opinion. All right. So hire human editors, uh, buy yep. books written by humans, go there watch you go. movies made by humans and uh listen to podcasts made by humans made by because, humans absolutely yeah and, and uh, i'm sure now now paul i think our next project is to try to train uh something on uh reproducing us as podcast hosts and uh we'll see we'll see if anyone notices <laughs> beep boop boop beep boop boop exactly boop, couldn't beep. have said it better myself good night everyone <laughs> good night good night good night